the all-new Toyota Camry TRD, driven by WWE superstar Braun Strowman, is leading the field to green. And Noe Elizondo, Toyota's honorary starter, ready to wave the green flag. And we're racing in Sonoma. Great jump right off the bat with Danny Hamlin. Christopher Bell almost got in there with him, taking a spot over Reddick. Off the racetrack here a little bit. You see Reddick fighting back really hard on the outside of Christopher Bell. Clint, I almost thought that maybe Hamlin and Reddick had something worked out. You see Reddick hits that inside curve and loses momentum. But I thought maybe they had worked something out on the start, a little give and take. Not the best start for Reddick for sure. Turn four, Gibbs and Truex side by side for four. Let me tell you this. Whoa, game look really at them fan out here to seven. This is the four into seven that I was talking about. That's the first opportunity, a huge passing zone. Oh, there's an issue for Suarez. He he didn't get off turn four very good. And then was slow off seven. Looks like it's running again now. Starting to get it sorted out here up front. Off turn 10, and now this shoot into 11. The dive bomb area. Oh, you see this all day long. Yeah, you see all those guys went down to the bottom to block, and McDowell kind of thought about trying to make that outside work. If they stack up enough, you can go to the outside and maybe get beside one of those and get a row or two. Hamlin leads lap one. From Bell, Reddick, Truex, and Gibbs, that's Toyota in the first five places. He took the words out of my mouth. First thing I saw when they were coming around there, five in a row, stacked them Toyotas up. Almondinger, he's holding strong right there in sixth. I think he's a dangerous guy for this race. Always a threat to win on a road course. He can make some hay today. He, he's good on all the road courses, but this has been his weakest one if you had to pick one of the, of the tracks that we run at. All right, let's check with our crew chief, Larry McReynolds. Let's take a look at the Sonoma race analysis, Mike. 110 laps, 219 miles. As Clint mentioned, we still have stages. They are 25, 30, and 55, but no caution at the stage ends. Pit road, pit road speed, 40 miles per hour. The fuel window is 40 to 44 laps. Five sets of Goodyear tires. Mike, do I do it in two stops, three stops, maybe even four? Well, thanks, Larry. And the elimination of stage breaks creates a lot of different strategies available for these teams. Turn 11, you're down to 33 miles an hour in the middle of that corner. And then accelerating all the way up and into turn one from there. Then you climb the hill to two. Go downhill into turn three, and there's some new asphalt, Jamie, in turn three, uh, where they've done some patching and repaving right at the apex of that corner. Give you a little more grip, a little more run there. Yeah, and Mike, I was shocked. Clint and I did go take a lap around the track this morning. I let Clint drive, shockingly, and we couldn't believe how, how rough the track has gotten over the last few years. Um, I know they had some erosion issues in certain parts of the track. You talk about that new pavement, but overall, the whole track, a huge bump right here on the exit of turn four, just as you get to that wall. You know, Clint, if you're Denny Hamlin right now, you're, you're wanting to go, but the key to this race and what we're going to talk about the entire race is just managing those rear tires. So Denny Hamlin right now maybe could run a little quicker, but he's just managing that gap based on where Christopher Bell is behind him. We are told uh, Daniel Suarez thinks he might have missed a shift, and if that happened over at the engine, that could be trouble. Whoa, Larry Mack tells us 9,700 RPM that you, thing hit. I can tell you he was his concern. You couldn't understand him. At any time you hear that engine at 9,700 RPM, that's extremely high. Off the pace, 20 spots. Daniel Suarez is off the pace last year's winner. Well, and just to be clear, you, you don't necessarily miss a shift in this car with that sequential shifter like we maybe had before. It's, it's that you just continue to go the wrong direction maybe with the shift. Over rev on a downshift. Larry? So remember, guys, he ran the Xfinity Series race, which is that four-speed H pattern, and he did that 9700. He went the first gears when he did it. 
Whoa. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. It's over rev on a downshift. That's the only thing that'll blow an engine through the rev limiter. You know, when you're going up through the gears, the rev limiter is there to protect the engine. But if you have the inertia of the powertrain against it, it'll over rev right through that rev limiter. And you know, Clint, we talk about the advantage of running the Xfinity Series race yesterday for a lot of these guys. Eric Almarola wins that. You get the track time, but the cars are different now compared to what we had a few years ago. Riding along with Daniel Suarez, now you're sitting there, you know what happened, you heard it. As a race car driver, oh, paranoid it, it's now. the worst, yeah. most god-awful sound you've ever heard in your life. Look at this, door-to-door -door beating on each still. other. That is William Byron making the pass. Right side, right side, right side. Let's go right. back to Daniel Suarez. And in an H pattern box with a floor shifter, second to third, you push to the right and away from you. If you do that in this box, you downshift. Listen to this. So that was on an upshift. See, he was trying to shift in another gear, and that's exactly what he did. He was thinking going second to third across that gate, just exactly like Larry told you in that Xfinity race yesterday. That's what he did all day long. When he pushes that baby forward, she downfish, downshifts into first. And Muscle he, memory. Yeah, absolutely. That's what I was going to say. He, he, run, he ran the Xfinity race yesterday, and, and you just do so much of this off just a reaction, right, Clint? You get so used to what gear you're in, first lap in this car, and just simply made a mistake. But I am 100% with you. I'm paranoid right now. Like, what, what's that engine going to do? Is it going to make it the rest of the race? No, it's the only thing you can think about. You can't yeah. even hit your marks because all you're thinking about is the sound of that motor, just waiting for it to go south. Through turn 8A and into 9 comes Denny Hamlin uh, leading Christopher Bell by 7 tenths of a second. On this date in 2006, Hamlin got his first ever win in the NASCAR Cup Series. 17 years later to the day, he is looking for his 50th career victory. Very impressed with these Toyotas so far. Extremely strong. I mean, one, two, three, four, five. You see them lined up. Think about, look at McDowell. Michael McDowell in the 34 and Busher in the 17. These guys are the guys that you just aren't accustomed to hearing about. They are the real deal on this racetrack. Five laps complete. Hamlin leading by not quite a full second. You have a nice cold coke, sugar, sugar, and buckle up. You're watching NASCAR on Fox.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Coca-Cola Zero Sugar. Is it the best Coke ever? Seven laps complete in Sonoma. Denny Hamlin's led them all. But look at this. Ryan Priest, who won the ARCA race on Friday, to the inside of Bubba Wall. You talk about curb hopping. What, has he got a lift under that thing? But this shows you how rigid those cars are. See how that wheel didn't fall out of the, uh, the wheel well whatsoever. Very rigid with these cars. And that's why you hear him talk about saying off these curves. If you hit those curves, it throws it for a loop. Look at yesterday. I think the big reason why you didn't see the number nine of Chase Elliott up more up closer to the front, hit that curve a little bit too hard and four cost him his lap. The Toyota top performers. It's easy to find, Mike. Yeah, they're all in the top five. Yeah. That's right. As you watch, we ride in to turn 11 right here. You see those tires on the inside. They'll slowly keep working those tires in because the grip is on that paint. NASCAR has the bottom of that mark, but those drivers all with the door of the car will keep working those tires in lap after lap. Well, and remind you, it's on the blind side of your race car. When you're turning that right-handed corner, you're as close as you can to those tires because that's where the grip is on that paint. You put your right side tires on that paint, and it all, not only helps you turn, it helps with forward drive up off the corner. And I think that only gets better. It's like that's fresh paint, Jamie, and then as it as right. it starts to get rubber burned into it, it's like adhes and, and like adhesive and uh, is super sticky. And it's the same thing right here as we get down into turn four. You watch the exit, you see the paint where that, that Toyota is painted all the red. As that black lays down, the, the grip level gets really high, but if you get beyond that, no grip. Martin Truex is the biggest mover. He's come from eighth up to third, and he is closing on Denny Hamlin and Christopher Bell. Doesn't surprise me, always extremely fast out here. Yeah, and he's one of those guys, you talk about managing the rear tires, protecting the rear tires. Martin Truex Jr., a veteran, been around forever, won here three times. You mentioned he's as good at that as anybody. Now, William Byron started way deep in the field, but he's picked up six spots. Regan. That's right, Mike. He's been on the move early on. Crew Chief Rudy Fugo told me that yesterday they did not like this race car at all. He threw everything at this car overnight that they could based on the rules, swung for the fences. Well, so far it appears that he did pretty good with that swinging for the fences because that race car, according to William Byron, is good right now as he continues to move forward. Jamie? Just an update on the 99 of Daniel Suarez after that missed shift. He went from 10th to 29th, and he thought maybe his engine was going south. Seems to be okay right now, and his crew chief, Travis Mack, said, all right, that just gives us an opportunity to be more aggressive on strategies. Only made up two spots since then, Mike. Thanks, Jamie. Denny Hamlin's lap times have fallen off almost two seconds from his fastest lap on lap two, and Christopher Bell has caught him. Yeah, and I've, I've been watching Denny's lap times. It seemed like if he needed to, he could, could gap Christopher Bell out a little bit. But that last lap, he had a rough lap, and we get to lap 10, Clint. It makes me think about at some point in the run, your car slides, and you never get that grip back, and maybe Denny Hamlin's finally hit that point. Well, it takes me to the exit of seven, right? You Exit of seven is where you put the power down, the forward drive up off. That's where you spin the tires, if you will. But if you keep spinning those tires, then all of a sudden through the S's, like we talked about earlier, you start getting laterally loose because you wore those rear tires out on the exit of seven. I'm going to tell you, they got to watch those Truex. He is, he is running those top two down. He was able to get by Redick a few laps ago. You see right here riding with him, getting a good straight drive off of turn 11. He's catching both Bell and Denny Hamlin right now. Tyler Reddick in fourth place. He's now 3.6 back. And right on his tail, Ty Gibbs. The, uh, the rookie was quite a surprise here in round one of qualifying. Had a good enough lap. He didn't have to try again, as many others did, and advanced to the final round. Says he really enjoys road racing in this place in particular. You heard that car bottom out on the rub blocks underneath the car when he went up and over that curb on 3A. Then A.J. Allmendinger in sixth place, first of the Chevys, actually first of the non-Toyotas. Michael McDowell in yellow right behind him, the first Ford in the race. Business is picking up right there with that whole group. I think the McDowell's starting to run them down a little bit, starting to stack them up a little bit. I think you're going to see some racing going on. McDowell, I think Busher's extremely strong. Allmendinger there, Reddick in that group. And I, I'm really pumped about Ty Gibbs. I think he's doing a phenomenal job at this race, managing and learning from those teammates. Suarez trying to take the spot back from Eric Jones at turn seven. This is for 26th. 11 laps complete. 
Denny Hamlin so far has led them all from the pole. Thirty-six of America's best drivers and thousands of fans have come here for one thing: wine and some and some great racing. Like Martin Truex taking the low line on Christopher Bell to take second place. A textbook seven. pass. There's seven right there, just like we talked about passing zone. He'd been hounding his teammate Christopher Bell for a while, but how about Gibbs? Unbelievable. One, two, three. Yeah, and, and Denny Hamlin was able to get away from from Christopher Bell right before. Uh, Truex got by him. Watching for our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering the race from green to checkered flag and every mile in between. Goodyear, more driven. You know, I mentioned Hamlin getting away, Clint. We're going to find out what he has right now because I think he's been managing that lead with, with what he needed to with Christopher Bell. But Truex has been able to match his lap times, if not a little bit better. So we'll see if Hamlin can push that car just a little bit more. I like one thing Christopher Bell did. He had Hamlin, or he had Truex shadowing him for more than a full lap. But Bell chose the one point on the track to let Truex by where it wouldn't slow down either one of them. To lose the least amount of time. Right. Yeah, it's, that's so key. Uh, and they're teammates, right? So they, they are going to work a little bit better together. And they're also going to work better at the early stages of the race. When you get down to the final part of the race, maybe not so friendly. I think you're going to see that gap in between Truex and Hamlin shrink very fast. Obviously slowed him up a little bit on that pass. Not much, just like you said, very efficient pass when he passes teammate Christopher Bell. But this Truex is here. He's got an extremely fast race car. Could be his third. 
the one thing that we see with all these guys in the front, all the Toyotas, they're not having to use the curbs to make the car turn. We talked about that you couldn't be so aggressive on the curbs. But the one thing that the drivers will do, especially right here in turn seven, you see Michael McDowell, Chase Elliott, Chris Buescher, all those guys get up on that curb. It's to help that car rotate and get a straight drive on exit. Well, you just said it. You rattled them all off. And I think a big reason you're seeing that, starting to see these guys getting held up a little bit. I think this nine car, Chase Elliott, good on a long run. Starting to get really close on the back bumper. Look for some passes among these cars right here. Talked to Chase Elliott this morning, and he told us that the reason you can't curb hop in the fast corners here is this car. Here comes Chase to the inside. Looking at Busher, going to close the door and get a little tap there at 35 Love miles tap. an hour. But that's the frustrating part about these passing zones. Now you got to wait all the way around to the next opportunity in seven before you do that. You got to set that back up. I love that you said that. That's exactly right. There's there's two key places to pass here. And if you can't get it done in turn 11, you spend the entire rest of this lap trying to set them up, as you say, to get back over to turn seven. So I was saying Chase told us in the fast corners, like say turn two, where everybody used to really pop front end, pop wheelies with these cars just about. He says you need to stay off the curbs because this car is so dependent on keeping that rear diffuser close to the ground for its downforce. There's a bad one right there, the inside of four. That's the worst one. Over the years, you see all the cool shots of the cars way up in the air. That was all off of turn four. Not the case anymore. See that Christopher Busher getting loose into the corner. That's what you're looking for when you got a guy in front of you starting to put the pressure on him. Now he's got to set him up for off of 10 into 11. And Clint, as we look at, at Chase Elliott at the back of this pack, there's four or five cars all stacked up in front of him. It's going to be hard to pass. I'm immediately hoping that my crew chief is going to pit me just a lap or two earlier because we know how much tire fall up there. Here's two and a half, three seconds at the end of the stage. Hopefully, I mean, I would even give up the stage points if I'm Chase Elliott, knowing that I've got to win to get into the playoffs. Do what we have to do to win the race. Still not going to get it done. Ooh. Just not close enough. Larry? Whoa, little You know, buck. Mike, I, talk, I talked about the strategy, and it, I think really talking to crew chiefs last night throughout the week, everybody's kind of thinking a three-stop strategy, which would be somewhere around 28, 30 laps a run. But to Jamie's point, I think once we get to about lap 23, 24, right in there, if you're on back in the pack, you're going to try to leapfrog these guys by getting there a little early and taking advantage of those four fresh tires. Brad Keselowski pitted out of 25th. To, uh... Well, and exactly what Larry said, no, no chance of him getting stage points. So go ahead and pit, try to cycle ahead. It's hard to pass, but that's an easy way to pass, knowing how much faster you're going to run when you pull back out on fresh tires. Interesting battle here. Cup rookie Ty Gibbs against veteran road racer Michael McDowell. This is where you start separating, you know, you start realizing what you have. This is where a balance becomes so important in your car. You can't be too tight. You can't be too loose. Starting to see Busher sliding that rear end into the corner, hustling that car because he's feeling the pressure from behind him. This is where you really start struggling. Every driver in the top five has won a road course race in the Cup Series. Twelve combined winners among the top five, led by Denny Hamlin.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Round out your protection with life, phone, and pet health insurance. And by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express card. 19 laps complete in Sonoma. Denny Hamlin has led them all. Here's the update on the Coca-Cola family of drivers. With Chase Elliott ninth. Uh, Joey Logano up three spots to 14th from the start. Uh, Austin Dillon in 15th. And Daniel Suarez, after that missed shift, back to 24th. Now, pit stops have begun. Here is the fourth place pass down into the dive bomb zone, turn 11. And that is A.J. Allmendinger taking the spot from Tyler Reddick to break up that Toyota top five. Pit stops have begun. Brad Keselowski in and out without losing a lap, but Ryan Blaney made his pit stop and was too fast exiting. He'll have to make a pass at pit road speed. Jamie Little. Well, update on Kyle Larson. Yesterday in practice, he looked to be the man to beat. He was on a mission, but he had a little hiccup in qualifying and started back in 16th. Well, he's made up six positions so far, and on the radio, he's asking his crew chief, Cliff Daniels, what the 11 of Denny Hamlin is doing and his lap time. They're letting him know that Denny is not falling off much. He's really good on the long run, but you see Larson now just turned the second fastest lap so far. Yeah, that last lap, Jamie, Larson was two-tenths quicker than the leader. Martin Truex has closed to within about three and a half seconds of Denny Hamlin. You know how fast he grabbed that ship. He's certainly using third at turn two now. He's just more worried about getting off the corner and slowing speed initially. What are you talking about in turn two? And actually gives up a little more speed entry to you, just focuses on getting off the corner. And he's not really using any curb in there either. Either it's loose off on the trying. Much better that time. I feel better. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we agree, right? Right. So I, I heard him short shift off to seven. I, once these tires start wearing out and you can't put the throttle down one of the aids is to go ahead and short shift that thing keep those rpm low keep the spinning the tires veteran move kyle bush last week's winner at st louis coming to pit road and these are scheduled stops i would say it's one of the sketchiest pit roads to get onto because you you come off the racetrack and you run that long curve and pit road speed doesn't start until you get all the way around the corner a lot of juice through there Woo, it's scary Four laps to go to the end of stage one. Denny Hamlin has been out front the whole way as we take you Fox side by side.
scheduled pit stops for Harvick and Logano. Two of the Hendrick Chevys uh, have been in. Elliott and Larson joined a lap later by Byron. So a lot of these green flag pit stops early. But some teams continue to stay out at 23 laps. One of those is Michael McDowell's. So you know there's guys starting to pit. They're probably going to do a four-stop strategy that is not faster based on our fall-off. we got good long-run pace. Stay on our plan. Good job. Great information because it's going to be frustrating for Michael McDowell when he sees this going on. Like, why aren't we pitting? So for your crew chief to tell you that, take a deep breath. You're like, all right, we've got a game plan. We know what's best for our car. They also, look at this, you're coming to the stage in. Mind you, remember, no stage break, but there are stage points. So only two to go here. This is a very valid conversation. We start like, uh, talking about Hamlin, Tricks, Bell still on that racetrack. Yeah, honestly, guys, the, the drivers that started pitting about lap 22, like Chase Elliott, Larson, William Byron, Chastain, I don't think they're on a four-stop strategy. I just think they wanted to make sure and get in there a little early on their three-stop strategy. I do, too, and I think they're going to leapfrog Hamlin and Trex or at least catch them. That's the play there, right, Larry? Absolutely, absolutely. But I do think we've got the play to what Travis Peterson just taught, told Michael McDowell, what you guys said. We got we got stage points staring at us right now here in another lap. And though we know how important those are, especially if Hamlin can win the stage, still gets that one playoff point. But these two we're looking at right there, those two teammates, they're after this win. They, they made that mistake last year. Cliff Daniels went for that stage one win, got it, and didn't get the job done at the end of the race. These boys right here with these Hendrick cars, they're after the win. You know the nine car, that's all it takes. He is a win and you're in scenario. Final lap of stage one, there will be no green and white checkered flag on road courses this year, but stage points will be awarded at the end of lap 25 Ooh. and 55. We saw Larson drop a, drop a wheel off right there. Lucky to catch that car. Last time Denny Hamlin won stage one was Kansas, where he went on to win the race. Hamlin has led more laps today then Toyota led in total on road courses in 2022. Here he comes, crosses the line, and banks 10 championship points, and as Jamie pointed out, that one playoff point for winning the stage. Truex second, Bell third, Almondinger, here's McDowell, fifth, Reddick sixth, Busher crosses in seventh, Gibbs, and then it'll be Bowman and Stenhouse should get the final stage point. And does. Well, you know these guys will be coming now. They got the stage points. The task at hand is done. They got to get pitted now because these nine, the Chase Elliott and Larson, those guys that short pitted them are catching them fast. Well, and when you look at Denny Hamlin from where he started the race to where he's running right now, it's over three seconds a lap. So Larson's pitted three laps earlier. He's going to make up nine seconds on the leader. He was about 14 behind at the time. So he's going to be pretty close to Denny when they cycle through these stops. 25 laps caution free in Sonoma. Hamlin has led them all. I think you'll see them pit. See him coming through. This time, time if you can. This time if you can. Yep. Eric Jones, Eric Almarola, who won the Xfinity race yesterday, gets a stop. So does Ty Dillon. In and out for Justin Haley. Here you come. You see Truex on pit road. Now keep in mind. You see 11 on your track map and the nine up here in seven. Regan. The 19 of Martin Truex getting a lot of details from the team as to where he's losing time. You heard him on the radio earlier. The car too loose right now wants an adjustment for that. Jamie. Danny Hamlin in the 11. That car was really good on the long run. That's what they expected to be the case today. A four tire stop here. Not much feedback from Denny Hamlin, who has dominated and led every lap so far today. Almadinger in as well. Takes about 45 seconds to go the length of pit road at pit road speed. Yellow line entering turn 11 to yellow line, exiting at turn one. And uh, Hamlin is away. 45 seconds. And I'm going to tell you, it's going to be somewhere right in there. It's where they're going to come out. Keep an eye on that intervals with these guys on the pylon. That group races their way off pit road and back into battle. Chase Elliott and Hamlin coming out of four and headed for seven.
And the first round of pit stops is pretty well completed. Twenty-eight laps complete in Sonoma. Let's take a look at today's Credit One Bank ones to watch. Who are you watching, Clint? Got one for you, <laughs> Chase Elliott's my guy. I'm telling you, started tenth, was fast yesterday, struggled a little bit in turn four, cost him some speed, but they closed the gap. Already running third, Chase Elliott. Yeah, I'm going to look at Martin Truex Jr. Started back in eighth, has worked his way up to second. He made that adjustment on the last pit stop. I think he can get by Denny Hamlin, and he's won here three times before. True, Denny Hamlin is looking for a championship, and the way to win that is win them all. He won the pole. That was a bit of a surprise yesterday, and he has not been passed on the racetrack yet. Larry and Trevor. Yeah, Mike, I've got my eye on A.J. Allmendinger. Qualified fifth, finished fourth in that stage. He seems to have good long run speed, and even with 11 races left to go in the regular season, he's almost already in a must-win situation. Yeah, I've got to take another road course veteran in Michael McDowell. I have not seen him slip that 34 car yet. Said he was going to run at 90%, take care of it all day. So far, he's doing that, and he got stage points in that first stage. And they are our Credit One Bank ones to watch. After 29 laps and after pit stops, Hamlin and Truex got out in front of Elliott and Larson. Larson's been passed by uh, Christopher Bell, A.J. Allmendinger in sixth, Kyle Busch, Michael McDowell, Tyler Reddick, Chris Busch are all holding top ten spots. You just said it and it caught me off guard. Christopher Bell motored right by Larson and he watch it right here off at of ten. He might get the job done on the nine car Chase Elliott. Yeah, Bell, Bell's the second fastest car on the track. The fastest car on the track, though, is who's catching Denny Hamlin right now. Martin Truex Jr. since that pit, whatever they changed on that car, it has come to life, and he is catching Denny Hamlin half second a lap right now. 
Well, they picked a good race to sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> These Toyotas are extremely strong. Doesn't matter who you put in front of them, they make pretty quick work out of them. I'm impressed with Chris, Christopher Bell right there. Past Larson, I thought he was extremely strong. I think the Hendrick cars, if they have something for them, I think it's got to come on a long run. Well, the Toyotas were at one point early on, one through five, but Redick has now dropped to ninth. His car uh, fell off the pace a little bit on worn tires, as did that of Ty Gibbs, who's currently 11th. Gibbs was eighth when that pit cycle started and now comes out uh, in 11th spot. Regan? Well, Mike, you guys talking about Christopher Bell and the performance he's having so far on, the, on these new tires. Earlier on on the old tires, he was complaining about forward drive with the car, a small adjustment for that, and his crew chief told him to make sure he saves some tire this run because they are going to run four laps longer than what they did last time. So a little insight into their strategy there. Yeah, and we talk about the amount of fall off at this racetrack. Christopher Bell pitted later than both of the Hendrick cars. That's part of the reason he's so quick right now. All right, traffic ahead. Andy Lally and Grant Enfinger uh, both in one-off drives here. Enfinger filling in for Noah Gregson, who's out with a concussion, and the leaders are just about to catch them, and they could be a factor in this. Who wants a race? Hey, you've been on that racetrack. You know what that is, and you're exactly right. These lappers are going to be tricky for the leader. Denny Hamlin's leading. He has to make sure that he catches those lappers at the right spot doesn't open the door up for Truex to pounce. Well, they're going to catch him in the S's, and that's not the best spot. Well, there's just no way to get out of the way. If you're a lapper right there and, and Denny catches you, you know, especially off a of 10, it's going to open the door up and be right in the lap of Truex. Here comes his opportunity. No, but listen, if I'm Denny Hamlin, I think about who's behind me. First off, it's Martin Truex Jr., not known for roughing somebody up, and he's also my teammate. I think Truex plays it cool right here. He's obviously wants to use them as a pick, but Denny Hamlin knows that he's not going to do anything to jeopardize either of their races. The only thing we've seen all day long we're learning here is passing is so hard to do. There's no way I'm letting that car around me without a fight. Here he comes. Truex to the fight. inside. Hamlin slams the door and then goes wide. Yeah, and so, so perfect move by Truex right there. He had no intentions to get beside Denny Hamlin. He showed him the nose, and the spotters are in a weird position right there. They can't see if he's there or not, so Truex kind of faked him out a little bit. And you see right now he's going to be in the preferred position because he's going to be in the inside of turn two. Right there. Quarter, bumper, clear, trying to cross you back here. Look at this. Still fighting hard on the outside, Denny Hamlin. This is exactly what I said. You can't afford to give these positions up. Blind rise at the top <laughs> of the hill <laughs> there, race. turn 3A, and all Truex all clear here. to the lead. Still have the problem with the lappers. And yeah, they haven't caught them yet. <laughs> They've passed each other twice. Off turn seven, Martin Truex, your new leader after Denny Hamlin led the first 32 laps here in Sonoma.
Week 9 of the USFL coming up next on Fox. A North Division showdown of the Philadelphia Stars beat the New Jersey Generals. They clinch a playoff spot. If not, well, there's three teams alive, and they all have a path to clinch in Week 10. So tune in next on Fox. It's going to be a good one right there. Are you a general or you're a star? I'm on your team, Clint, whatever team that is. But what are you, general or a star? Man, Actually, I'm a stallion, Birmingham stallion. That's my team. There was two picks. Yeah, I'm a stallion. I don't care. You still get to pick your favorite team. Martin Shurek's leading at 35 laps here. He passed Denny Hamlin uh, three laps ago. Let's uh, check with Larry McReynolds for our guaranteed fit, sponsored by eBay Motors. Yeah, Mike, it'll be Martin Trex Jr. and Sonoma. Martin has four career road course wins, including three right there at Sonoma. His last four Sonoma races, three top three finishes, including two of those wins. He has led the most laps in four of the last nine Sonoma races. He has led a total of 213 laps at Sonoma. That's second all time to Jeff Gordon. This could be the eBay Motors guaranteed fit for Martin to get his fourth Sonoma win and his second win of 2023. Thanks, Larry. Let's check with Jamie Little. An update on Kyle Larson running fifth right now. Cliff Daniels told him they're going to run six or seven laps longer this time out, so about 28 to 29 laps. He also told him that he's faster than Chase Elliott and Christopher Bell ahead of him. He said you can get him through turns two through seven, so a lot of information coming off the pit box, but he sounds very pleased with the effort so far. So, Mike, let, let's talk about Elliott and Larson. They, they short pitted, right, four laps earlier than, than really anybody in the top ten. And they have cycled to the front. Now, their lap times aren't as good right now. They're, they're struggling just a little bit in relation to those cars, but they gained what they wanted. They, they need the caution stuff all right. They're going to have to run a little bit longer this time. But Larson had a really good car in the long run. We know Chase Elliott did, too. So they used a little bit of strategy there. They've got their track position now, and they're going to try to maintain it. They gained the positions. Obviously, track position, and you're right, they're going to struggle with it, holding on to that track position at the back of it, but they gained the hard-to-come-by track position or positions on that racetrack, the passes, if you will. Now, how about A.J. Allmendinger, who is right behind Chase Elliott, one of the best road racers in this series. Is he holding station? Is he trying to charge past these guys to the front? What's Allmendinger do here? Well, Almendinger's got the fresher tires, and so and he knows that. His crew chief has said, hey, we have four lap fresher tires. Go get those guys. And he's been catching them fairly quick, but we saw, we saw, we've seen this entire race, how hard it is to pass. And Clint has been talking about, you got to be good off of turn four to make the pass into seven, or you got to be good off of turn 10 to make the pass into 11. If Almendinger's car is not good in those areas, it makes passing those guys so much harder. You know where the easiest place to pass them is? Pit road. Yep. yep. <laughs> when they're there and you're not. Yeah, and so listen, we talked about Elliott and Larson. They were 13 or 14 seconds back of the leader. You see they're eight or nine now. Anything they gain in that is, is a bonus for them. So they, they have come out way ahead in this pit it's cycle. It's the positions. The track position is one thing, the time on the racetrack. But if in the event a caution comes out or whatever, I mean, you literally went from, you know, ninth and tenth place to third and fourth, fourth and fifth. I mean, that was a huge gain. All right, so in Clint's uh, Super 6 contest for 10 grand, which driver will have the better finish at the end of the race and by how many positions will it be Kevin Harvick currently 19th or Brad Keselowski 22nd? Ooh, down to the wire. When I saw that six car, Brad Keselowski on the road <laughs> right off the bat, I was like, well, that's an easy answer, <laughs> Kevin Harvick. Now he's running back down. Kevin Harvick in his final Sonoma appearance. Trying to put another W up on the board for the number four and Stuart Haas. Martin Truex Jr. and Toyota in command right now.
Yeah, they popped the cork a little early this morning here in Sonoma, <laughs> didn't they? <laughs> if you're going to do it, do it right. <laughs> that guy did it right. Yep. Well, well done. Adam Devine giving the command. All right, let's show you uh, our look at Sonoma Raceway uh, from all of our technology. And there are the marching ants. We, the you one know, that's when circled on the right is your leader, Martin Truex, of course. Absolutely. You know when you're 40 laps in on a green racetrack, green, 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 all the way through, we've had green flag pit stops already. You know, where is everybody? You got Gibbs down here. That's it. That's your 10th place guy. You've got uh, William Byron right there, your, your uh, 15th place guy. Priest right here, that's your 20th place guy. They're all over this racetrack. I think the name of the game, I like what Hamlin is catching. Like he's holding speed with the leader Truex right here. I think that whoever comes out, we say this all the time, if he can beat him out of the pits, I don't think he lets Truex back around him. Well, this pit area, when old Larry Mack puts me in here, I want him to give me that track position. Whatever decision he makes on pit road, that's what I want him to do. Get me out in front of that guy. What I've seen with, with Denny and Martin is that Truex is a little bit better on the short run, really short run. Denny's better in the middle of the stage. And then Truex, again, is better towards the end of that. And I think those guys, and I said it at the very beginning, they're pacing themselves. Truex could probably go a little bit harder at the beginning, but you're just trying to conserve tires because there is so much fall off here. And Mike, as they catch lap traffic, you need more tire because you have to put your car in a different position. We saw how hard it was for both those guys to get by the lap cars earlier. I'm watching this knot of cars, four cars here, third through seventh, and Michael McDowell trying to run them down the first board in the race. But these four have kept a pretty close company. Here comes McDowell, he's gonna be there in a minute. Goes back to what you were saying, though, bandaging those runs. You see Chase Elliott, he really took off. Him and Christopher Bell took off and left Larson. Now, all of a sudden, Larson's run them back down. His speed is in a long-run car, just like that car, Michael McDowell, right behind them. And I loved what Trevor said. Trevor picked him as his credit one once to watch. He's like, listen, I talked to McDowell earlier. He's going to run at 90% today, and I think that's a great plan going into this race until you get down to the end because we talk about opportunities. Michael McDowell's won the Daytona 500. He's always a threat at super speedways, but he's also always a threat when we come to these races. This is his chance to get in the playoffs. You hear him go over that bump. Jamie told us about the exit of four and a, a massive bump over there as you come off of that curb and you can hear him hitting the chip. Behind them, Chris Buescher just got past Tyler Reddick. You may have seen that at the top of your screen. That'll change eighth place. Ty Gibbs holding down the top 10 spot. And Reddick's been a surprise today. He dominated at, at Coda earlier this year, Clint. And we thought yesterday it looked like he had a great car, but it has been a little bit of a struggle for the 45 car today. Well, he's dominated with ever since we've went to this new Gen X car. He's been the, the name of the game on these road courses. Struggles at this racetrack, though, for sure. I love being able to see his eyes in the car. You see him trying to look around the corner. You see him now trying to get a straight drive on exit. You're always looking ahead. Your shift lights, you actually base on just kind of your peripheral vision. Right here as we go up into turn one, you'll hear him lift right there, give it a little bit of throttle, drive up the corner. He's trying to get as far to the left. There's a little hole right there that you're gonna to try to get in. You then try to get your tires on that curve. It puts a little bit of load onto the outside Position tires. In front, don't need to waste any time with the and that's the crew chief, he, but I'm trying. Yeah. I don't waste any time. Trust me, <laughs> I'm not going to waste any time. Now, Kyle Busch uh, just pitted, you see the right of your screen, from 11th spot. He was one of the first, not, not the first round of cars to pit in the first round, but uh, first of that second wave of cars to come to pit road. How many times have we come here and seen Truex Jr.? When he decides to go out and lead some laps here, Buddy, he is so dangerous. He, Just puts her on cruise control and keeps finding lap time, lap after lap. He's got three wins here, and but for Tony Stewart on the final lap, getting his final win of his career, Truex might have four here. 43 laps complete, 67 to go in wine country, California. Martin Truex out front.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by Ford, built for America. 45 laps complete, 65 to go. Martin Truex out front of Denny Hamlin. Uh, that lead now less than a second. And uh, Hamlin had closed it up to about six tenths of a second, and then Truex pulled away. Larry, what are we looking at for pit stops as we go forward here? Yeah, honestly, we've completed 46 laps. To make this thing work on three stops, you're probably looking at about 48 lap, 48 to 50, about two to four laps from now. But who's here to try to win a stage? You have to go to lap 55 to make that happen. But I think we're getting to the point of the race, the way this race looks, you better start focusing on what it's going to be, what it's going to take to be to that checkered flag first. Thanks, Larry. There's Kevin Harvick in here at lap 47. Kyle Busch has already made his second stop. Kyle Larson, uh, we're, we're hearing, has been told on the radio to watch Chase Elliott and pit when he does. So that's a little different. I can handle that. Yep. Yeah, and right look, in front as, of me. As we look at this group of cars right here, from, from Chase Elliott, Christopher Bell, all the way back to Almendinger, they're so close together. They're within a second, second and a half of each other. If Albendinger can pit one lap before Christopher Bell does, he will cycle out in front of him. And we talk about the fall off. There's three seconds of fall off. But when you cycle through those pit stops, there's only two or three tenths different for those first few laps. So you gain so much on the front side or the, the back side of that and don't lose it on the front side of the stop. Did you see a turn 11 there? How do you find a better line through the corner? <laughs> Move the stacks of tires. I've been watching it for the last couple of laps. You can see right here where they were supposed to be, and now they're not there anymore. Somebody's <laughs> hit him. You see the mark on that tire. See the mark on this one as well. You start moving those in. The grip is on this paint right here, and the closer you can get your tires on there, that's the name of the game. Man, I don't know. I think <laughs> we need a caution to move that back over there. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Larson lost two spots that last lap. He got passed uh, twice. Yeah, he's fading at the end yep. of this runner. You know, he's he, not. He let Michael McDowell go. He saw McDowell catch him, uh, making up so much time. And, you know, this is a road course, but Clint, you kind of race it like a Darlington, right? Make you We talk about guys wanting to let let them go to, to in the, 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 you know, the place that cost each of you the least amount of lap time. Well, McDowell, he not only let McDowell around him, so did Chase Elliott. McDowell on the move. Jamie, how about the five? And Larson has came on the radio and said, hey, they're on better tires than us. I'm fine, but I had to let him go. And also, they originally told the five of Larson to pit with about five laps to go in this stage. Well, I went over and checked with Alan Gustafson for Chase Elliott. He said, we want to run longer than that. So I'm not sure if they're planning on staying out until the end of the stage. We'll just have to watch, Mike. Okay. Sounds to me like they're playing games. They don't want anyone to know when they're going to pit. <laughs> So Truex has now opened up 1.2 seconds on Denny Hamlin. That group led by Christopher Bell, they're about 13 seconds back of the leader after 48.
Saturday on Fox, baseball's most iconic rivalry takes center stage. The Yankees battle Rafael Devers and the Red Sox, or you'll see the Rays take on the Padres. Catch it all Saturday at 7 Eastern on Fox. For the game in your area, check local listings. Well, right after Ross Chastain had pitted from 12, look on the right of your screen at Zane Smith's pit stop. They roll a tire over to the wall from the right front, and it doesn't get caught. Gets an assist as the car pulls out of the pits. That goes out into a danger zone. Caution waves. The key is the next car around here you're going to see is Ross Chastain. He was on pit road. Opportunity strikes here for some guys. Finally a caution, Jamie. Justin Haley will get the free pass on this, the very first caution flag of the day. So that erases Truex's almost two second lead on the field. Literally right in the middle of all the conversation here in Banner, back and forth on the radio. We're coming, we're coming, it's time, it's time. And all of a sudden, here comes the caution comes <laughs> out. And you hate that if you're one of those guys in the lead, not just because it bunches the field up, but because they're all gonna pit under caution now and you have such a chance of losing so many positions if you have a bit bad pit stop pitting under caution because everybody's grouped up. When you pit under green, you have a three or four second lead, you know, 15 seconds back to, to 10th place, you can have a slower pit stop and it not cost you as much. Well, that group from uh, Ross Chastain on back, a bunch of those cars had made their stops under green, uh, including Chastain, Kevin Harvick, and others as it cycled through. There you go. And so you can look at those that have very few laps on their tires and won't be coming under this caution. Yeah, you see, I mean, clear back to Stenhouse, six laps, Austin Dillon, seven, Byron, seven, Bush, eight. I think all those guys stay out right here. Well, they, they got to stay out, out but it's a position. huge difference for Ross. I mean, Ross Chastain could not have been any better to be on pit road, have that caution fall, and he's basically going to be on equal tires to all these leaders. So here they all come to Regan Smith. Christopher Bell in the 20 car. Heard his right rear tire, told his team about five laps ago he felt like he had really destroyed it too much, losing all lateral grip with that car as well. The 19 of your leader, Martin Truex Jr. That was looser this run than the previous run. He fought loose the previous run, still too loose now. Jamie? Denied to Chase Elliott. He said it's handling about the same as it was before. Balance isn't bad, just need to take care of those rear tires. The 11 and Denny Hamlin getting that fresh tear off, said he's trending loose on the long run. Pretty happy with the 11 car. So looks like Kyle Busch will be the leader from Joey Logano. Yeah, and the 11, you saw the front tire changer have an issue right there. It cost him some spots on pit road. The tire changer went down. Here's your race off pit road, sponsored by Ram. Now again, these cars will not be the leaders, but that's how they come off pit road. First caution flag of the day in Sonoma. Nine cars stayed on the racetrack and did not pit.
NASCAR on Fox is sponsored by the Credit One Bank NASCAR American Express card. 52 laps complete. We're under caution for a tire that rolled away from pit road. Let's take a look at brake bias on these cars with Larry McReynolds and our Toyota cutaway car. Anytime we go road course racing, you hear a driver talk about adjusting front and rear brake bias. Let's go to our Toyota cutaway car at the Toyota Tech Center and show you exactly what he's doing here. The race car has twin master cylinders, one for the front and one for the rear. The brake bias adjuster knob is right there in the center of the dash. Now, if a car is loose under braking getting in the corner, you can crank a little front brake. If it won't turn getting in the corner under braking, you can crank a little rear brake. You think about it outside of steering, throttle, and brake, Mike, this this is the only other thing that a driver can adjust inside that race car. Thanks, Larry. I think this is a good time to, I'm glad you just said that. All right, you've got old tires. You've got all your fast cars, your front runners, Truex, all these guys we've been talking about. They're coming down. They're going to have to make some adjustments. Dive bombs are coming. You've got to have to make these passes and make short time of them. Better make sure those brakes are adjusted right. Well, this is when all the chaos breaks out. When you when you have guys cycle to the front that haven't been up there today, you see Kyle Busch, Joey Logano, William Byron, and they're on older tires. They're not going to have the grip that we're, we know Truex or Hamlin is going to have. But those guys have to be patient as well. They've they've got the best cars. They've got a little better tires. They're just going to be patient to get up through there. All right, the 2023 Toyota Camry TRD is going to make the turn as we get ready to go and ready to restart here in Sonoma. Beautiful day. Beautiful racetrack. In fact, talk with Nelson Hastings, who has been covering racing here uh, since it first started on TV for NASCAR. And we agreed, we've never seen this place so lush, so verdant, uh, just so beautiful here. Very green for June in Sonoma. This is the opportunity that William Byron was looking for. Started 26, struggling after yesterday's practice. Not a lot of light into the tunnel, was had a fast race car marching up through the field a little bit, very slowly. Now they have the track position. They're in a deficit on tires, but they, they passed a lot of cars because of that caution right there. But just like we saw with, with Chase Elliott and, and Kyle Larson earlier, they might not hold on to it, but it's going to work out in their favor at the end of this run. It's a big net gain yep, for big them. net gain. All right, coming to the Geico restart zone. Finishing up this first caution of the day. And we're back to green. Kyle Busch on the break from Joey Logano, William Byron, and Ross Chastain. You know, Clint, I thought it was interesting that Kyle chose the inside there because I always wanted to be on the on the, where Joey Logano is, being on the inside of the next corner if you could, could race him up the hill. But Kyle got a great restart and was able to get him cleared. Have to be so careful again if you're true X right there. You can see him back there kind of a mid pack. You know you have the fastest car. Be careful around these guys. Yeah, and if the, the one I'm watching those Ross Chastain, we know he has sticker tires. You see him right there beside Ricky Senas Jr. And look at the drive. Let's watch the drive that he's gonna have off of turn seven. You see him right behind Joey Logano. He's a little bit of curb. Gonna be three wide probably going into You're turn eight. You're gonna see it right but here. Look, That's look the that. drive you were look talking about. Oh, he got run off the racetrack. Yeah. And that Joey was, Logano shut the door on him. That was very unross like You normally you think he would have stayed in there, but I think he knows the position he's in, and we've talked about it. He needs to now try to get a good run off of turn ten so he can do the dive bomb down into eleven. He has to pounce on it immediately. Take advantage of those fresh tires, just like you said. Has to happen now. Out of turn ten. Down into 33 mile an hour turn 11. That's Truex to the inside. Corey in effect, you see him really stack up right in front of Truex. And you know, Mike, sometimes when you see the, the guys run into each other in into turn 11, it's not intentional. It's that you're just trying to time that run out. And if the car in front of you doesn't time his out, then there, that's when you see that contact. You see you're riding along with Truex. I was gonna say, there's a car on your outside. He slipped, locked the tires up. Now there's one on your open inside. the door, yes. I can tell you the worst thing to hear as a driver is three wide and you're in the middle. <laughs> I don't, better w watch your guard and in this McDowell. You get let him get around Truex, I don't think you'll ever get him passed back. McDowell's car is extremely fast. He's in a good situation here. 
You see, watch Truex lock up this tire right here. As soon as that tire locks up, you saw the car, it doesn't turn. It'll stop or it'll turn, but it won't do both of them at the same time. It's also hard. What do you do to fix that? You let off the brake and try to get the tires. Makes going. it even worse. You can't worse. afford to do that yeah. because there's a car that you're fixing a door on the outside. So here we come to the end of stage two. Again, no stage breaks on road courses, but they will award stage points and a playoff point to Kyle Busch, who will get his second stage win of the season and Great his time. first stage win at Sonoma. Bush across the line, winner of stage two, Logano, Chastain, Byron, Stenhouse, then Dillon, Truex, McDowell, Bell, and Harvick gets the final stage point. Two stages down, 55 laps to go. Kyle Busch, your stage two winner. Welcome back to the Toyota Safe Mart 350 on Fox. <laughs> As Martin Truex has been curb hopping today, he has led 18 laps. Denny Hamlin 33. Kyle Busch has now been out in front for half a dozen. There is your leader from our aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every lap, every mile, and every victory on the road ahead. Goodyear more driven. Truex is not getting up through the field quite as good. You saw him get around Stenhouse there getting in a seven, but he's not making very quick time with these passes, is he, Jamie? No, and I, Kyle Busch has done a great job hanging on to this lead. He and Logano, it's hard. I thought they would drive up through there a little quicker than they are. Uh, the, the tires only being four or five laps. I'm with you. I think you got to do that in the first two laps. That's where you see that pay the biggest dividends. So the Xfinity fastest lap we're showing you is times on the last lap that they ran uh, where your leaders a minute 20 06 you know who has the fastest lap of the day Corey LaJoy 90.76 miles per hour and is number seven that was back at lap 28.
Maybe it's oh, Whoa. maybe it's all that short cutting that's going on. Well, I'm not sure it was move that that, tire. That's not, not really the way you do that. Yeah, that I'm not sure it was that lap. Yeah. It's incredible though to see how tough the bodies are on these cars. You know, we, we talked about the lack of cautions today, and part of that is we used to see body rubs. When there was contact on the track, it would cut a tire down. Something like that with the old car, your day, you did pitted and had to come in to work on that. And I, I mean looking at it, I don't even see any damage to this car right now. Quite a pack uh, at battle there. Regan? Well, Mike, you guys have been talking about the 34 on Michael McDowell earlier and how good he is. The strength of that car, the long run, and that's what it was yesterday. He predicted coming into the day, if they could get the long runs, that would play out to what they need. The way that caution fell, it sets up for these next two runs to be the longest of the day. Travis Peterson told him this is exactly what we want right now. Jamie? about an update on Ryan Blaney, somebody we haven't even mentioned today. It's just been one of those weekends for this team. The 12th team, they tried something completely different with the setup here because they have struggled on the road courses and it just hasn't been good. He's loose. He's tight. He's qualified 31st yesterday, running 28th right now. He's the regular season point leader right now, but what a letdown for the Blaney fans right now, Mike. Well, he had that penalty too fast exiting on his first pit stop of the day. As we ride with Daniel Suarez in 21st, he's in the midst of a hornet's nest from Ryan Priest on back in 17th. Ty Gibbs, Brad Kozlowski, Bubba Wallace just ahead. Uh, then Suarez, LaJoy, and Reddick, and Almarola. That is quite a pack. I loved hearing what Regan said that Travis Peterson, the communication that he's given Michael McDowell. He said earlier, he's like, look, we're, they're on a four stop. We're going to be on a three stop. Don't worry about it. Great communication. Just now what we heard, he's telling him like you're doing exactly what we need. Clint, I loved I loved my clear my, my crew chief being a little bit of a cheerleader for me and it all working out. Yeah, they've got it set on kill this weekend. They know this is a big opportunity for them. Michael McDowell does a great job behind the wheel. This is a good, good track for them, and they're capitalizing. They're the ones that are holding pace with Truex getting up through the field for sure as he tries to make a move on William Byron. Yeah, and all these guys, you see him racing William Byron right here. They know what a good road racer he is. He, he has a lot of respect from all these guys. He maybe isn't up front every single week. Obviously, it's been better the last couple of years with this next-gen car, but they know when you get to these road courses that you got to respect him. And listen, he's a really nice guy, right? He's, he's really calm, but he's aggressive inside of the car. It drives as hard as anybody. And that's the difference. A lot of people come to NASCAR from road racing. They just don't have, let's say, that killer instinct to be aggressive when necessary. Michael McDowell has no such problem in that department. Jensen Button's a great example. When he came and ran a road course earlier this year at Austin, he's like, my lord, I can't believe how aggressive everybody is. He doesn't have a lot of experience here. Michael McDowell's been around long enough. He kind of gets how all that works. And you've got to have the respect of those other guys and, and be able to root on them and gouge on them the same way they're doing to you. You're talking about Coda when he ran that race. <laughs> it did get a little, little rough there. It was. It beat him up pretty bad. He's a new lap. guy. You never let the new guy in that easy. What about that? You see Joey Logano pull down and block Ross Chastain. Felt like he didn't get off turn 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 10 very good. Chastain, though, doing it the hard way around the outside. Unbelievable. I love that. You go ahead and block that thing off. I'm going to get to your <laughs> yeah. inside, and now I'm on the inside, and I'm going to try to push you out of the corner. This is going to get interesting when you get up to the top of the hill here. Well, and, uh, you there know, it is. Those two guys, same racer. They they rough people up, but when they get roughed up, Whoa, they don't get mad. Up. They don't whine about it. You see how you see Chastain got a little bit loose Absolutely. on the outside. Look look who's there to take uh. the opportunity and maybe get a two for one here with Truex. Now I'm setting That's him so up for the exit of turn four so right here. Watch. Let's see if Chastain blocks him getting into seven. I think Chastain's going to be Here comes the passing here. zone. Truex going to shoot to the bottom. Don't wheel hop. On your left. Okay. The one thing Go about turn there. seven is that you get in there, you can drive up on that curb. Even though it's off of the racetrack, it's so slow that you have a little bit of an escape zone right there if you're Truex. She's cheering him on, wasn't she? Second slowest corner on the course, turn seven. He'll have another chance down at 11. You talk about the slowest corner right here. This is a really intense corner, how fast that is. You see Martin trying to get that run off of turn 10, but just not there. But he wants that, that position. Chastain knows that he's got a good car and how aggressive he's being right here. Those tires being gone down there in 11 really opens the door up. You see Truex 
Shoot down to the bottom, hook that bottom, and away he goes. Yeah, and you almost wonder, did, did Chastain get his rear tires hot, making that outside move, maybe slipping him off of turn 11 the lap before? Because when he got up here to turn two, you saw him run wide. It just looks like that car's lost some grip now. Well, hey, that is the fastest car all weekend long, all Good day point. long. You know what I mean? Yep. You, it wasn't no slouch, it just passed it. <laughs> Well, thanks to Toyota, we're going to stay right here for commercial free racing from Sonoma as we go Toyota all out. Tyler Reddick trying to rebound here. He is 22nd as he passes Keselowski. Truex third, Bell in eighth, Hamlin 12th among the Toyotas, Gibbs and Wallace 18th and 19th, and then Reddick in 21st. Truex, Truex, big, another dive bomb, getting into 11. Watch him hook this bottom no hard in the throttle. Here he goes. Truex to second. You better run and hide, Kurt Busch. Or, excuse me, Kyle Busch. I mean, I do that all the time. It's so easy to do. I just saw Kurt this morning. He is here, by the way. And Truex has cut the lead to two and a half seconds after that pass as he begins to drive away and chase back to the lead. In the early laps, Toyotas were one through five, then they got kind of sprinkled through the field up until the caution flag at lap 49. Just shows you the strength in Truex's car, though. I mean, you know, obviously well, we covered Hamlin had trouble on pit road, but he hasn't been able to get through them near as good as Truex. No, a quick time of getting up through the field. He's been able to manage the, the, the cars a lot better and be able to make those passes. So Truex two and a half back, and that gap right now is pretty stable. The effort to score wins and championships doesn't stop at the racetrack. Join us for a look at one of the ways Toyota prepares its drivers for success at the Toyota Performance Center. My name is Caitlin Quinn, and I am the director of the Toyota Performance Center. The Toyota Performance Center is a place for specifically drivers in our Toyota driver development program, but also any professional Toyota Motorsports drivers who want to be a part of the program. We offer everything from training to nutrition to mental edge training and anything in between. This is our main weight room. We also have a heat lab where we train heat tolerance. We have a teaching kitchen. We do a lot of training, but if the drivers think of it as a clubhouse, it works pretty well. Wow, come to the racetrack ready to win. We need heat to tolerance. We need to get Whoa, Clinton got one around, field. Austin Dillon. And this is a turn 11 at the exit. So he didn't get it fired up here. Yeah, I think they'll give him a second. He's out he of the running way. running 17th. He's at the there he goes. He got it fired up. At the entrance to Gilligan's Island there, the alternate pit road they used. How did he the end day. up there, Mike? Like, I, that's, a, that's a really weird place to I'm going to get you a replay here soon. It's coming. You come around turn 11, you get hot on the gas, and the car rotates right, spins all the way around. That's or you just do that. Yeah. Here he goes. Or, or you get some help oh. off the front bumper. Well, that can happen, too. Ty Gibbs. Oh. We should have stayed on Ty Gibbs for one more lap. We I, I want to see the entrance of 11 if we get a chance. I, I don't know if you'll be able to see that shot, but I think there's some Paul Harvey going on there. There's the rest what? of the story. Oh. <laughs> I'm glad you asked because I was getting ready to. Your age, Mike, you should know that. Yes, I did. Here Austin Dillon missed, got loose. See that? Trying to slip around. Yeah. That was just, that was not Ty Gibbs. Let me correct that. He kind of slid right in front of him. Ty Gibbs is trying, you heard him lift, trying to give him time. What did Ty Gibbs have to say about that? Uh, I got inside up there and he got loose and he kept digging. So I didn't want to do that, but that's kind of his fault. Yeah, kind of. I agree well, with you, Ty Gibbs. Keep digging. Yeah, Wasn't I'm, your fault. I'm going to say Austin Dillon's going to see that differently, but uh, but I'm with you guys. I, that's, I mean, <laughs> I don't know that Ty actually did anything wrong in that situation. I'm coming right here, buddy. Bum, Motoring bum, him down. Bum, right. bum. Martin Truex, when we started that Toyota feature, was two and a half seconds back. He has now cut one third of that away. It's down to 1.6. Yeah, Truex can take a deep breath once he got by Joey Logano and kind of reset Clint, right? He knows he's going to be better than Kyle Busch. Again, just trying to save those tires, being methodical, not trying to slip the tires. He had to work that car a little bit hard to get by 
Chastain and, and Joey Logano earlier. Well, let's talk about the opportunity and how well Kyle Busch and company in that eight car last week's winner took advantage of that opportunity to their good. <laughs> Hang on, Get boy. A loose. A little loose off a of 10 there. But like I said, a huge net gain. I mean, they are literally a contender for the win now yeah, because and, of that. And you know, Clint, it's incredible. Like they've, they've run well. We know they have the three wins this year, but when you're having the momentum on your side, the calls just work out for you and things are on your side. Look at this though, watch watch him get to the throttle right here. Y'all, that car out. I that, think it, that it came is so from, much fun inside it the was car. Tight and missed the bottom. And if finally the front tires caught up and, and the rear tires. Well, came around. The rear tires are screaming right now, Mike, as you see Truex running him down. All right, let's take a ride with Martin Truex as he tracks down Kyle Busch. Yeah, this would be a great way to get a look and we can see the balance of Kyle Busch's car. We'll see if he's able to get to the apex of the corner. Does he have to use the curves to get the front end to turn or is he able to stay off of those? Or Mike, we could just do this view right here and stay on yeah, the top. Yes, we could. <laughs> yeah. Well, I can tell you from my view, that car in front of him is getting bigger. Yeah, and I, I, him, is, do you think, I don't think he catches him in time to make a pass in 11 yet. I think you might wait till seven. Yeah, I, I, I mean, he's quick enough. He doesn't have to push the issue. And the, the you know, when you're in Kyle Busch's car, you're just looking out of the back the whole time knowing that he's coming. Congratulations, Roy. Five grand of Clint's cash pending verification of eligibility. Hi, Roy, that's my man. Love it. Ohio Roy. Yeah, you see there that? You I'll yeah. put that together. I like that little nickname. So that's why I said didn't get him done. It didn't get him past an 11. I think we got to come around here. We're setting him up. I want to get close enough at the top of the hill. Try to get in position. You see Kyle Bush starting to slip around a little bit. Get in position off of four. Set him up for a pass in seven. The top of the hill, 3A. Here, 43 more. Excuse me, that was. Here comes three and 3A. And I don't know if he's going to be close enough right here. Still don't think he is. But we've seen Martin be really good in the braking zones. Kind of like Tyler Reddick at Coda. He was so good in the braking zones. We'll see if he's not able nope. to get up beside him here. Now it's a complete reset. I'm going to get a wide entry, get turned, and I'm going to stay as tight as I can to him to get that Ooh. good exit off of turn 10. Didn't and that's a good launch there. That's what makes this track extremely challenging and frustrating, mind you. All right. Turn four, I didn't get the good run, didn't get him past in seven. All the way around, try to set up the next opportunity. And here it comes in seven, which by the way, it slipped up off the seven, like Mike said, and I might not get it done in seven or 11. And you know, Clint, one thing about this track, the section we just saw from seven down to 11, that's the fast section of the racetrack. And you can have one balance at the fast section of the racetrack, and then everything from right here, back around to turn four is a little bit of a slower section. It kind of flows back and forth. So you could have a good balance on one side of the track and not the other. And it looks to me like the 11 is able to get off or the 19 is able to get off of turn 11 and then just kind of roll in on him right here. Man, Truex really hugged those tires tight off of 11. Extremely tight. So with those uh, stacks of tires moved at turn 11, uh, Kyle Busch's spotter has been busy with instruction. Now in turn 11, he's off and away. He pushed that last barrier over in turn 11 further back. You can use that now more further around the corner to wrap it if you need for exit. That's exactly what I was saying. I saw him do oh, it. Oh, he's going for it right here. Ah, there he by go. himself, 15.2. Clear, clear. I tell you what, it looked to me like the eight had a good exit off of four. But from that view, I mean, Kyle had to let him go to come from that far back. You see Kyle slipping and sliding around, losing the rear grip on his race car at the top of the hill. That's a veteran move. I mean, you can't hold that guy back. Not when he's that much faster. Live to see another day, and I think that's exactly what Kyle Busch did. Third place, Michael McDowell is closing up on Joey Logano who's using a lot of racetrack and a little bit of dirt here, too. Whoa! Not that ain't pretty hot this there. time. You see, there's the last set of tires. Yep. You see on the exit, that's when, when the three cars spun, it moves some of those out of the way. That opens that opportunity up. 69 laps complete in Sonoma. Martin Truex for Toyota, leading Kyle Busch's Chevrolet and Joey Logano's Ford with 41 laps to go.
things are so intense and you have to be so focused. There's not an ounce of room anywhere else in your body to think about anything other than what you're doing in that moment. These things are scary, you know, they're dangerous. Racing obviously is dangerous. It's taken friends of mine. Brian Clawson was one of the best drivers ever and you know, he got killed doing it. A big impact. I've crashed a lot since then and you know, something like this has not slowed me down. Even if you are the best, even if you are at the top of your game, it's something that we all live with. The season finale, Dirt, the last great American sport, Tuesday, 7 p.m. on FS1. Speaking of dirt, my old buddy Carson Macedo, bad tumble last night at Knoxville, caught on fire, heard some good news. I uh, talked to Kyle Larson this morning about him. Thoughts and prayers, what are you thinking about you, buddy? Heal up. You bet. 39 laps to go here in Sonoma, and this battle for third has been a good one. Michael McDowell in that yellow Mustang trying to catch and pass. Joey Logano catching him is one thing, passing another. One more try. <laughs> Dive bomb here. Might get it done this time. <laughs> I didn't know if he was going to get it slowed down right there, but he, he did. It looked like it slid the back just a little bit. He has been working Joey Logano over, though, for the last five or six laps, just trying to get in the right position and finally gets it done talked to him before this race and you can just see the confidence. I mean, he was literally grinning. Could not wait to get in that race car. Here's Christopher Bell, Larry Mack. Uh, oh, let's get to Regan first. Well, Mike, he's been struggling with rear grip all day long and this may have been a little bit of change of strategy plan a little early for his stop right here. Four tires for Christopher. All right, Larry Mack, what about pit stop strategy from here on out? Yeah, Mike, we went back racing with 57 to go. If you split that out, that's pitting with about 30 to go, which would be lap 80. But remember what happened when that last caution came out. It benefited cars that had pitted early. I'm probably in the next three to four laps. I'm going to go ahead and make that green flag pit stop and in the perfect world, get that caution and get that track position. I don't want to wait all the way to 30 to go at lap 80. Nope, there's Alex Bowman, the Ally Cam on board his car. He just made his pit stop as did Christopher Bell. It seems like today's day and age, I mean, if you're going to get that magical, you know, caution that Larry just spoke of, it's going to be because of a mistake on pit road, exactly like we saw with the 38 car. Yeah, and, and Larry said the, the magic word, it's lucky. The one thing, if you're going to win one of these races, sometimes you got to get just a little bit lucky. We saw it with Kyle Busch earlier, you know, being in the right position. And and for, for Michael McDowell, I, I think they're going to have to take a little bit of a chance here to try to leapfrog ahead of him. Regan. William Byron, a good break to get some track position with that 24 car with the previous caution. The car right now is just too loose to the right-handers for him. Kyle Larson's in. Luck Denny is Hamlin, our preparation meets an opportunity. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right, Larry. Well, here comes the opportunities. Jamie. See Denny Hamlin in as well as Kyle Larson. Four tires just trying to get more grip. That's what all these drivers want right now. A little air pressure adjustment for Denny Hamlin. So I guess, Larry, this three-stop strategy, it, it'll still leave you a set of stickers if we get a late caution. And that's all the crew chiefs I spoke with yesterday and last night. Yeah, they, they really were thinking about four stops, but it saves you no set of stickers because we get a caution there with about 10 or 15 laps to go. You want a set of sticker tires laying there to be able to utilize. Do you see that becoming a play though, Larry? I heard you say that right there. I just don't know. Let's go to Regan here. Well, Clint, the 22 of Joey Logano has been battling loose all day long. Better this run. They're making good adjustments on it, but he still needs more with that car. Jamie? Ross Chastain in the one car making his way down pit road to his pit crew. Remember that caution came out before when he was on pit road. They had already pitted, got all that track position. Car's pretty good, just getting a little bit loose, but pretty much happy with it. Didn't have the best qualifying effort, but to see if they can stay up front and utilize this track position. There's your Xfinity winner yesterday, Eric Almarola. Getting his service. He's been hugging right around the top 20 today. Martin Truex, three seconds up on Kyle Busch now. 
Yeah, and Mike, looking at the lap times, those guys, Kyle Busch, Michael McDowell, Chris Buescher, they're going to have to get on a little bit of a different strategy than Martin Truex Jr. because based on pace, they will not outrun him today. I was surprised Buescher didn't come in with Logano. They were racing almost side by side together uh, for third. Logano pitted. Uh, Buescher stayed out. So here's Truex. The leader pit. Oh, it's the worst case scenario for the, for the 8 or the 34 because he got on pit road before them. Regan? Well, the 8 car, Kyle Busch pitting also this time right now. The 8 car comes in good for three laps and then it starts to lose grip as he runs. And the 19 of your leader, Martin Truex, he has been very pleased on the radio the whole time, has not said a word about his car. He didn't necessarily, he came with him. You, you're talking about Kyle Busch there. The 8 car came with Truex. I still, what a huge advantage that caution was for guys like Kyle Busch. Put him right into the game. That puts the Fords out front. McDowell and Busher trying to stretch out this run on this set of tires. Jamie. AJ Allmendinger, the two wins he has in Cup, both came on road courses. Car's been pretty good. Of course, another one of those drivers calling for rear grip. Just do whatever you can to help me out. He was also frustrated on the radio there, gave up some position before he was called into pit road. Larry, what do you think the game plan is here for McDowell? Well, they, they've got a, the two things can happen here, Mike. You've got to get on pit road now, or they may be thinking about trying to run it long and hopefully catch a caution. And if we go a whole lot of laps, catch a caution, not only are they going to pit, probably everybody that's made these green flag pit stops are going to pit because they'll have a number of laps on their tires. That's the only way this would work out for them. If here they, they don't come. get the pit They're road, pitting. there they are. They had to. Yeah, to give Luck a chance to operate, they were going to have to stretch it way too far. I thought that was in the danger zone. All right, let's start with Regan. The 17 to Chris Buescher right now. He's got good lateral, or excuse me, he needs some more lateral grip with that car, especially on the left sides of the car. And the 34 of Michael McDowell, this was an audible. They were not going to pit initially this soon, but when everybody else did, they got on the radio about three quarters ago, said we have to right now, just a little bit loose to the right-handers. So Chase Elliott cycles to the lead. Remember, this is the first road course that Chase has raced this year. Yeah, and Mike, you know, listening to, to Michael McDowell's strategy there, making that audible, he'll lose two to three seconds to those those guys, Truex and, and Kyle Busch that pitted that lap before. That's going to put them, and now look, he's going to be in this group of cars, which is going to hurt his lap times even more. He's going to have to fight to get in front of Chastain and Eric Jones right here. Let's say he's got a great run on the exit there. Look out. Traffic jam. And well, that worked, three. That worked out well for McDowell, though, because one second later, and he's behind all five of those cars, he might spend the next six laps trying to get by them. Three wide at a turn four, and they come out. <laughs> 34 laps to go in Sonoma. Chase Elliott in the lead from Kevin Harvick, Ty Gibbs, Tyler Reddick, and Daniel Suarez.
Welcome back to the Toyota Save Mart 350 on Fox. 32 laps to go on this twisting 12-turn road course in Northern California. Here's your aerial coverage provided by Goodyear, powering every mile and every moment on NASCAR's road to victory. Goodyear, more driven. So at the front of the field, Chase Elliott, in his first road course appearance of the season, he was recovering from a snowboarding accident uh, when we ran at Circuit of the Americas in Texas and uh, was unable to compete there. So first road race for a fellow who's had so much success on these road courses. Yeah, and Mike, we talked about it. The, the 19 car is the fastest car. They'll have to do something different in order to outrun him, and Alan Gustafson's doing that right now. Riding along with Kevin Harvick in second place, same conversation as Chase Elliott. Trying to give Luck a chance to operate. Let's gamble. Cards are on the table. Tyler Reddick in third. Yeah, Tyler Reddick, I mean, one of the best road racers in the series. This has been a struggle for him, though. But like Clint said, going to try to get themselves a little bit lucky and get a position to go in this race. Martin this Truex the, in fourth, first car on fresh tires. And this is the guy they're all trying to jockey around for position, trying to do something to offset them on strategy. Martin Truex, fastest car here today. And action on pit road. Here comes Chase Elliott and Kevin Harvick. Jamie, a uh, Regan, excuse me. Kevin Harvick in the four car, struggled with drive early on in the race. This particular run, though, just losing the rear tires too much, too loose with the back of the car sliding around everywhere. Jamie? Chase Elliott led four laps there, but had to bring it down. Said he's tighter now, but he thinks it's, it's a good thing as he pulls it into the pit box for four tires and an air pressure adjustment. Been pretty happy with this car today. You know, Mike, he said his car's tighter now, and he, he likes that better. The one thing about being a little bit tied at this track, and Kevin Harvick said it in our pre-race show, it's a little bit more forgiving. If you're loose, it's it's hard to control what you have. You typically have a little bit of better drive off. We've, we've really focused on that the whole race long. So being just a skosh on the tight side is not a bad thing. So the lead cycles back to Martin Truex, who pitted at lap 75, five laps ago. The two cars that are out there on worn tires in the top 10 are Tyler Reddick in second and Bubba Wallace in eighth. The teammates at uh, Team 2311 have not been to pit road since lap 51. And Mike, they're running three seconds a lap slower than Martin wow. Truex Jr. is right now. So not only does he have the track position and the tires, I mean, the lap time's just not even close right now between those guys. And also Daniel Suarez, who we're showing last stopped at lap 43. There is the fourth place battle led by uh, Joey Logano. And Suarez finally makes his appearance on pit road. Larry Mack. Yeah, what I was going to say about Tyler Reddick, the only way this would work is if we go another five or six laps. But I think they decided, you know what, this is not working. So they did hit pit road as Daniel Suarez and Bubba Wallace did too. So, but for Ryan Blaney, who uh, had a penalty earlier and got a lap down early, everybody has made this pit stop. At 17 at Chris Buescher, it just seems like every road race we go to, not, not flashy, right? Really yep. quiet, but just top tenure to death. There at the end, puts himself in a good position. You see, getting to the inside of Ross Chastain right there, moves up to the top six. In particular, this one, he's really good at Sonoma. You know, you, you talk about the experience, taking care of the tires, managing these tires, not usually abusing them for drive up through the S's like this. So really good, really good here at Sonoma. 29 to go, Martin Truex, 3.8 seconds up on Kyle Busch. Now we're going to take you Fox side by side once more.
27 laps to go. Martin Truex looking for his fourth Sonoma win. Trying to drive away from Kyle Busch, Michael McDowell, Joey Logano, the rest of this field. Here's your progressive race summary. Truex has been out front for 29 laps. Denny Hamlin's led 33, five different leaders, seven lead changes, and still 34 of the 36 cars are on the lead lap. Hamlin and Kyle Busch won the stages today. No stage breaks in road racing anymore. And we've had some interesting difference of strategies among, among the top drivers. You really, all right, let's 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 talk about it. What shook it up? It was that caution. I mean, who was the big winners? It was the eight, Kyle Busch. It was a 22, Logano, one of Chastain, 24, Byron. Big winners from that caution. All right, where did that come from? It was the expense of Denny Hamlin, Kyle Larson, and Chase Elliott. They were the big losers of that. Eight, hey, think about this. Kyle Busch was running 15th, took him right to the lead. Chastain, 12th, he was went right back in there, capitalized on it. 17th for Logano and 19th for Byron. That was a big change of events for those cars. Yep, a huge swing. And uh, here's a look at some of the contenders and how things have moved up and down. Note Christopher Bell, uh, plus three after his pit stop. Now Denny, Denny Hamlin, minus three. As Clint pointed out, Kyle, Bo uh, Kyle Larson minus four. Yeah, I mean, Denny Hamlin, you know, I mean, he was running right there, led a lot early, was running second, had a bad pit stop, and then a double whammy came with the, the uh, pit stop, or excuse me, the caution that bit him. Yeah, when he had the bad pit stop, that the next 10 laps of his race just kind of crumbled. He lost a lot of positions when he got back in traffic, and we talk about it all the time. Some guys, Truex was fine in traffic. I mean, when he was able to maneuver his way through, Hamlin did not have a good restart and then lost a few spots. When it rains, it pours. Well, it's been a different race, and the main reason, as you look at our Fox race tracker in the upper left of your screen, <laughs> is just that. One caution flag all day, and that is it. That has changed things up. So, Larry Mack, let's say we get a caution with 20 laps or 15 laps to go. you got 34 cars on the, lead, on the lead lap. Do you want track position, or do you want that set of tires that's sitting in the box? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Depends on where you're at. But, I, but I'm going to tell you, if we get a caution, who really could be in the catbird seat could be someone like Chase Elliott or Kevin Harvick that waited and made that pit stop. They'll have less laps on their tires. But I do think the caveat, Mike, is exactly what you said. 34 drivers on the lead lap. You know no matter what, there's going to be some guys in the middle of this pack that's going to swing for the fence and stay out should we get that late caution. There's no question. You cannot make them passes very easily on that racetrack. It's going to have to come at the expense of some sort of strategy on pit road if, in fact, that ever even happens. Well, I'm going to tell you all right now, the caution comes out. I am going to pit, and I'm going to sit in my pit box until Larry puts four tires on my car because I just think it's so much easier to be on the offensive here than be deep. Defensive. And you're you going to hope you drag 25 guys oh, yeah. into pit road with you. Absolutely. And you got to get a little bit lucky, but Chase Elliott being in the position he's in, if the caution doesn't fall in the next four or five laps, I, I don't think he's able to stay out. I, I think you can have max eight to ten laps on your tires totally to be agree. able to, to maintain that position. June 24th, the CONCACAF Gold Cup kicks off on FS1. Check out the U.S. men's national team as they look to defend their crown in an opening match against Jamaica. It all starts June 24th on FS1. You see, you guys keep talking about this caution. I mean, you, you pointed it out. There's been one caution. It wasn't on the racetrack. It was a tire getting loose. That's why I go back to my credit one ones to watch, Martin Truex. I'm on board of that 19 all day long. We're going to win this race. I think I picked him. Oh, uh, I don't think yeah, so. I just, I just I <laughs> point out the obvious there. I think that was my guy. Well, Martin Truex broke a 54 race winless streak at Dover this year in May on Fox. Uh, he's been just a little indeterminate about his future. Does he want to keep racing beyond this year? If he's having a good time and winning races, he says, oh, yeah. Oh, he seems he seems way happier this year. Mike. Yes. And I, I mean, even before he got that win, it seems like he's enjoying life a little bit more. And those wins, that's just a bonus. Oh, this right here, this is the carrot dangler that Joe Gibbs and company, everybody involved wants to see. You put that cat out front, let him go win. He ain't getting out of that seat. No way. Why would you?
Dover ended that long drought. 54 races. And he pretty well dominated there. You know, but that's been Martin Truex's M.O. If 100%. he wins, he wins when he's been strong all day. He doesn't sneak up and surprise you. Love him. He's the most boring winner I've ever watched in my <laughs> he life. Is. He just yeah. goes out and stays about a half a track ahead of everybody and goes ahead and wins the race. <laughs> His younger brother, Ryan, won. Uh, That's a big weekend for yeah. the Truex family in Dover. Dominant. So Chris Buescher moves up a spot on Joey Logano. Up behind Michael McDowell, who's running third, right where he finished here last year. It's so funny going back to Dover when both of those boys win and Martin, the dad, he was there, buddy. When I saw him after Sunday. I bet he was in good shape, he, right? He looked, yeah. he looked <laughs> like he'd been celebrating a little bit. I don't blame him a bit. That's think, a big, proud Papa day. Think about that, though. You're a dad now. Oh. There's no better moment than, than to be proud of, of your kid playing sports. My kid races carts. Just one it's of just, them. I know. I mean, you think about that. Both, both of them? your kids winning at, at the top level in the same weekend at what you call your home racetrack. That's that's well, a special weekend. It's called taking all their money. Looks like Chris Buescher is closing on Michael McDowell, who is 6.9 off the lead. Martin Truex, your leader with 22 to go. We'll go side by side. in the NASCAR on Fox season. 16 races complete. The next 20 will be on NBC and their family of networks. Two weeks from today, June 25th at Nashville. Want to wish them uh, a lot of luck with a lot of great storylines we can hand over to carry through the rest of the season. Whoa, a storyline, uh, I can't say it. Denny Hamlin spun out on front 
on the front stretch. Yes, it is. Unbelievable. I didn't see what happened. I looked up. I was talking to you, Mike, over your shoulder. Denny Hamlin's backwards. Just spun right at start finish. Yeah, but that you see yeah. the toe links broke on the back of that car. I don't know about everybody at home, Clint, but you just gave me a heart attack. Man, I'll tell you what, I couldn't believe it. Definitely bent the right rear. Right front. Hamlin. I had Mike crying up here My about going off the air, and I, <laughs> I Hamlin see was tense. Hamlin crying on the front stretch. Let's see what happens. See, he's already up against it. It kind of takes me back to turn well, 11. See the skin on the oh. tires? I think he may hit those tires off of 11, maybe. Or he could have had totally. contact maybe on the exit of four. We're going to see. Yeah. There's, there's going to be more to this story. Coming off turn 12, he got up into the wall. A lot of damage to that right rear quarter panel. And then he spins into the inside barrier. The way that car, and, and it was bent on that right rear, it takes me back to those tires in turn 11. Did he get into the tires and bend that toe link? Yeah, he's, had, he's definitely had contact with something, and when it breaks that toe link, it actually, the, the rear of the car you see, it starts steering the front of the car, and you're just along for the ride. Well, he'll try to wheel it around under caution. Well, there's one thing I can guarantee. This changes the game for this race. What well, we do here, Larry? Well, I think there's no question. We're going to go back racing probably with about 15 or 16 laps to go. You look at Martin Trex Jr., 16 laps on his tires. Even Chase Elliott, 10 to 11 laps. I think you're right. They're all going to be coming here because we've got too far to go to the checkered flag. Everybody's got a set of sticker tires. I'll tell you who's not coming. Michael McDowell. They have played contrary strategy all year long trying to get a win. I, Do I, they I dare risk it? No, I, I, think, I think you have to pit if you want to win the race. You okay. can't hang on with that. Truex has been the best car. you got to pit. He's got to hope Truex has an issue on pit road. Maybe shuffles him to the back, and then he can race Kyle Busch for the win. But I think I, you got to come to pit road. I agree, but I think this is a given luck a chance to operate. If you're, all right, let's think about it. Chase Elliott. There's no way they think they have to win. What do you have to do? You need, if you're going to stay out, you got to have enough the cars behind you, a buffer, if you will, between the guys that don't. But yeah, but unfortunately for Chase Elliott, I think the caution came three or four laps too late. We talked about he needed that caution to fall between five and eight laps in order to stay out. I, I think that's going to be a struggle, guys. If you do stay out, the only thing that can help you is cautions. So Hamlin makes his way to pit road where hopefully they can replace that tow link and fix any other damage. Everybody's coming around up at turn number seven and headed for pit road before they get there. We'll remind you that coming up next on Fox is week nine of the USFL. Now in the North Division, if the Philadelphia Stars beat the New Jersey Generals today, they clinch a spot in the playoffs. But if New Jersey wins, then all three other teams will still have a path to clinch next week. So a lot at stake here. Tune in next on Fox. Here's some uh, Martin Truex radio. The guys up behind stay out. We're on a five lap tie differential. Yeah, it's just four. Just think there's too long to go given we have 16 on tires, especially if we get more cautious. Yeah, I agree with that. That's the leader. I'll be the first to tell you, there, when you got 33 drivers on the lead lap, there's going to be a handful that's going to stay out. Absolutely. If you follow the leader, that's all you'll do is follow the leader. <laughs> I think you look for the opportunities. You look for people. I like what your head was at. And Mike Joy, when you said McDowell, I look at a Chase uh, Elliott that's in a must-win situation. There's other guys out there. You need 10. You need 12 cars to be a buffer. Look at Truex thinking about it. What's he going to do? Still time. Still time. We're pitting. All the top 10 and more. There's Coming Chase Elliott road. staying out. Regan. Kyle Busch continues to lose grip as he runs with that car. Same problem that he has been fighting all day long in that eight car. The 19 of Martin Truex, they said that they felt like those six or seven cars would stay out. Made the decision a little bit tougher, but it was easy when they got to the top of the S as they said, pit, no complaints on the car. And the 34 of Michael McDowell, just too loose to the S is going left and right right now, Jamie. Ross Chastain pits from the sixth spot, says he just doesn't fire off as well as the cars around him, and he's still on the loose side, but certainly not terrible for the one. He's still got a shot. Well, here's who did not pit. Well, first, here is your race off pit road sponsored by Ram. 
Truex and Bush. The first one's off. Chris Buescher gets one. So does Logano, Chastain, Larson, and Almendinger. Chase Elliott stays out. So does Tyler Reddick and Ryan Blaney. Things are heating up in Sonoma. McDowell got crushed in that. I have made it to downtown Winchester. What makes this connection between the track and the town so special? Oh boy, let me tell you about Winchester. It combines everything that makes our sport so good. It attracted all these major names. My favorite racetrack. This place has been around over 100 years. It's brought a lot of notoriety to Winchester. I know there's a lot of opportunities for the community to connect with the Speedway. I want to go to work. You got something for me? I do. That's what makes this place so special, right, is the history. And when they are renovating it right now, they haven't forgot about the history. Just because we're in a small town doesn't mean we can't have a big impact. Rust to Revival. Winchester Speedway airs Thursday, June 15th, 6 p.m. Eastern Time on FS1. Joey Logano there. Hosting that one. Well, we found out what happened to Denny Hamlin. At, it was the inside wall at turn number 12. Watch the third car in line here. Yeah, he's following along right behind William Byron. Just turned it in too sharp. Nails the inside wall. Shoots him right out into the outside. And when he hits this outside wall, that's what broke the toe link with the right rear. I've seen that happen before. Man, it really unraveled out from underneath them. Starts with a pit stop, then an untimely caution. Caught them off guard. Now we're pretty much on the on the truck headed to the house. And the damaged vehicle policy clock's going to expire on him. Here is the choose uh, cone just after turn nine. And then they'll head for the Geico restart zone and get this race restarted. Now Michael McDowell was up among those front runners but they lost the right front lug nut, came off, rolled away. They had to go for a spare on McDowell. Here's his radio. Well, that sucks. Man, I'm so sorry. You've got to be kidding me. I guess I should have stayed out there. Sorry. Lottery. Let's hear boys and girls. 
stay calm. Now it's the driver Tomorrow. being I like it. I like yeah. the driver being optimistic. Well, you know, those he knows. Nothing you can do about it. That's that, right. Those guys, they're bummed out. That's a hard one to swallow. You know, guys, we talked about if you stay out, if you don't. Blaney really hadn't had a great car today. It's been behind. But he only has seven green flag laps on his tires. He's in the best position of the guys that did stay out. Chase Elliott has 12 laps on his. Tyler Reddick has 11. All right, let's talk about it. Elliott and Reddick, I mean, this is going to be short-lived. You're a sitting duck, I'm afraid. You need a caution quick. Through the Geico restart zone, and we're back to green. 15 to go. I like the call, though. You have to win. Let's go for it. Put the cards on the table. Well, the one thing we've seen of the drivers that had tires on, Clint, those first couple of laps is where it's really magnified, where you see that's the, that, that is the most of an advantage. What I want to see, don't let Truex get to that inside. He's already the inside of Reddick. Try to hold them up. Going to try to run and hide. Truex to the inside of Reddick. Truex in got to go mode, and so is Kyle Busch on the first tire. Trying to hold pace up. with the 19. Yeah, he did a good job. Oh, look Dive at the eight going to the inside. Got to go. Can't wait. Yeah, you can't. You can't let Truex get away. If the eight's going to have any chance of being able to race him. Truex did a great job of making quick time. Yeah, that what, spot of Reddick. What Kyle Busch wants to see here is Chase Elliott be able to hold up Martin Truex Jr. for a couple of laps to let him close that gap back down. He was able to get by Tyler Reddick, but it took him a little bit longer than he wanted. Well, Truex won't quite catch him here at turn 11. He might have to wait for turn seven, or will he wait? Oh, he's definitely going to have to wait. The thing is, on those new tires, there's just such an advantage on the acceleration off the corner. You can see him roll in on him. Right now, if I'm Truex, I'm going to patiently wait until I get off the exit of turn four, do that pass into turn seven. And Chase Elliott knows it's coming. And there's nothing he can do. to. This isn't a track that you can block on. He just has to try to run the best corners he can and hope that he gets a good exit off. Well, that's what I was going to say. Yeah, he knows. And what he can do is try to be good where you know Truex is going to try to set you up. Unfortunately, it's right here. On your left. You're just Even. not going to hold that guy here. off. Truex back Way to the lead. Fast. Kyle Busch closes up on the lead duo, but won't get a chance here. Yeah, Kyle Busch is going to have to capitalize when they get to turn 11 this lap if he's going to have any chance of, of catching Truex. We know that the 19's had the best car, and right here he's going to try to stay as tight as he can to Chase Elliott as they enter the turn 9 right here. Now they make this turn turn right for turn 10, and he'll probably try to get to the inside of, of Chase in, into 11. I'm telling you, though, this is a great call. Alan Gustafson, that's a great call. He might lose one more spot here, but there's still a big gap right here. This is a game changer. Somebody just shot way out of the screen. Logano. Reddick's got a flat tire. Reddick. Flat left front tire. Yep. Well, there's a good chance that could bring out another caution because he's going to have to go all the way around the racetrack. There's nowhere else to get off. Long ways around from there. Missed pit road entry. Oh, he's going to go around. Wow. That's a pretty heads up move. I don't know. It, can you do that, Larry? I mean, he, he, he did I it. don't know he, if you can do it or not. You but can, he did. You can do anything he did. Well, it. That's right. I, yeah. think, I think that was smart on his part. Extremely and honest, smart. Honestly, I believe NASCAR is okay with what he just did there. Yeah. I, I don't think I've ever can remember back somebody doing that, but that's a heads up play. Well, saved a caution flag, and it got him off track out of the way. Yeah, it's it saved. I, I bet he gets penalized for, for what he did right there. I mean, you've cut 90% of the racetrack off. Well, there's the help. Yeah, but he already had the flat tire getting down into that. Oh, Almirola. Top of the hill in seven. Gets going again. And Kyle Busch is within a car length oh. of Martin Truex at turn 11. Now, this is getting interesting. We haven't seen anybody. Truex has been great on the short run, but we haven't seen these two cars together on equal tires. And that's that's pretty impressive to see Kyle close Eyes that in. That's a good point right there. Eyes forward. Do not get in that mirror. Get to looking in that mirror, trying to wonder what he's doing. How is he catching me? 
That's when you start making mistakes. One slip up, Kyle Busch is around you. Well, and if I'm Kyle, I'm pushing as hard as I can, trying to get in front of Martin. And if I use up too much tire, who cares? It's it, We'll move on. You're trying to force him into Absolutely. a mistake. Absolutely. Force the 19 into a mistake. If I'm Truex, the opposite of that. I'm trying to be as smooth as I can and just save as much as I can for later in the race here. He's trying to force Martin Truex to make a mistake. You've raced against this guy. He's pretty he solid, make, Mike. He's pretty solid, yes. Kyle Busch's crew chief, Randall Burnett, leads all crew chiefs with six wins over the last 34 races. Won twice on road courses last year with Tyler Reddick. Well, and when we talk to Kyle Busch... Oh, oh you see, Josh Stephanie, Balicki. When we talked to Kyle Busch, Mike, in the pre-race show, he said the weakness of this A-car team was the short tracks, and it's the same rules package that we have here. This has got to make you feel really good. They already have the three wins this year, and to be able to close it out today with another solid run, got to be a good feeling for all those 18 guys. Kyle Busch was almost a half a second faster him that last lap. It, Truex matched his speed there. Truex back to the fastest car, got away from him a little bit. Elliott and Logano passed Blaney, who's back to fifth here. Yeah, but Blaney, Blaney has been in the back all day. He had that speeding penalty early in the race. This guy, he's hit a home run in the last 15 minutes. Yeah, he went a lap down. His average running position today, 26th. And here he is up in the top five with 11 to go. Martin Truex, Kyle Busch, who's going to win Sonoma? Let's take you one final time side by side. Well, let's not. Eric Jones around. Top of the hill, 3A. Fires it up. Yeah, and that's a blind corner for all of those cars behind him. Very dangerous corner. Nobody yeah. can see. That was lucky, unscathed. And he may coast off the track here. We'll see. Yeah, he's just trying to get it restarted right here. When he spun out, the engines died, and he's trying to get it fired back up. I can say that the 19 does not want to see a caution because he doesn't want to have to race Kyle Busch on a restart. We saw Kyle Busch last week just do an amazing job with Larson on all of those restarts at Gateway. He was able to nail all of those. And I, honestly, Clint, he's hanging with the 19 much better than we've seen anybody do all day long. Truex, a couple of tenths quicker, but one slip up, Kyle Busch will be there again. Truex and Busch have had 10 one two finishes, including Martin's last win here in 2019. Now, about that side by side break. We'll take one more here with 10 to go.
Eight laps to go. Martin Truex has pulled out a bit of a lead on Kyle Busch now. 1.2 seconds. Joey Logano 4.7 back. And Chase Elliott's about to have some company in the form of Chris Buescher. Larry, how about a final look at the trends of the season here? Yeah, Mike, since we're doing something different here, and what I mean by that, we're not throwing the caution for the stage ends. I just decided to look at the first 15 races of 2023. And in those 15 races, the final caution came with 10 or fewer laps to go. We've had seven overtime finishes this year, and the final lead change in these 15 races came with 10 or fewer laps to go in basically half of them, seven races. Wow. Well, Larry, Kyle Busch is cheering for you. I can tell you that right now, because that would all play into his favor. Well, I'd say there's about 35 drivers <laughs> yeah. cheering for me. 36. Add my name to the list. <laughs> no. All right, Christopher Bell just made the move on Ryan Blaney down in turn 11. And that is for sixth spot. Busher ahead of them. Uh, Blaney with Almondinger. Now, Tyler Reddick and the strange path of Tyler Reddick. On further review, he is going to do a pass through penalty down pit road for short the cutting finish, the points. We actually went backwards. It doesn't surprise yeah. me. Even though they went backwards, reverse direction, they're still going to do a pass through. You know when you stump old Larry Mack, that was, there was something it, wrong there. Well, I mean, all right, let's think about this. You it, said it. it. There's a long ways around there. He, he made... I'm going to tell you he made the right decision. If he would have kept going around there, we would have probably been under caution, and who knows what's going to happen. So oh. caution, another one in seven. And yep. that's one of those situations, guys, where you stay out, right? You're not on as good of tires. You're doing everything you can to hold those guys up. They get tired of it. He gets down to the end of the race. There's just there's there's no give. It's all take. He was running six. Blaney. Oh, Almendinger slides in there. McDowell I think Almendinger was going to wreck if he didn't get out of the way right there. And you see a little... He tried to cross effect. back over behind Almendinger, and McDowell got in the back of him. Here it is from Kevin Harvick's view on the Ford onboard camera. Yeah, it all started with Almendinger, you know, just like you said, diving in there really hard. He tried to cross back over and get in line. McDowell was there, got in the rear of him. That's unfortunate. That's a big, big knock for Ryan Blaney. Had everything going. Things were finally trending his way after a tough day. Fortunately, gets turned around. Denny Hamlin checked and released the infield care center. He's the only car out of the race. 35 running with six laps to go and only oh, three cars uh. not on the lead lap. And Ryan's rough day continues. He's well, ready he went for the from off six weekend. to 20 second. Now we're, we're even worse than that. Well, when you spin out like that, your tires get hot. Then you have even less grip. Oh, and you see right here, again. Chase Briscoe. Turns him around right here in turn two. I'm on fire right now. Chase might have had a little help from Daniel Suarez, well, maybe too. So. But I'm going to tell you right now, there was flames coming out of my helmet inside that race car. That is the ultimate knock oh. at the end of a long yes. race. Finally got yourself battled back, got some light at the end of the tunnel. Poof. Blows up in your face. Well, at least Ryan Blaney's got a win in his pocket, that Coca-Cola 600, that he's not like Chase Elliott and others trying to fight to get their one yeah, win to get in point, the playoffs Mike. right now. Yeah, that's a great point. They had an incredible run a few weeks ago and locked in now. Well, I wouldn't stand in front of Ryan Blaney on his march back to the truck and try to tell him that little silver lining tip. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Absolutely not. Martin Truex picked up a win here. 10 years ago. Driving that Toyota for MWR. I'll tell you what, Mike, anybody could win in one of those MWR cars back in the day. It was it was incredible how fast they were. Yeah, we... Uh, <laughs> you're yeah, talking we to Boyer? I know you're talking <laughs> directly to Boyer, I was right? talking directly to Clint. He Apparently just... nobody could win in... What number was that? <laughs> number one? We, uh, no, that was a good times. It really was. We got on to something, Brian Patty and, and myself, uh, we went to VIR, went and did a test there, and I knew when we left there, I said, buddy, these guys are in trouble. We went on to win that race, and Truex took the exact same setup and went and won in 2013. Has never looked back since. And Clint, your whole career, 
you, you talk about Truex being good at saving tires. That was your thing. You were so good at a place like Richmond, those tracks that you had to save tire and, and really discipline yourself. And this place kind of played into your wheelhouse being somewhere that you had to, to manage your car a little bit better. It's always a fun racetrack, challenging. All right, Truex the leader, Bush a second and a half back, Logano six seconds back, Chris Busher nine seconds back is at the front of this next pack and he's pulling away from them. Here comes Busher having a great day. Nine seconds back. He has about a one second cushion on Chase Elliott who has no cushion at all here. Well Chase Elliott's in the same same position that that Blaney was in just a second ago. He's, he's on the older tires. He's done a little better job hanging on. Maybe had a little better car than Blaney did. But with these last this last four laps are gonna be tough for him to hang on knowing those guys have better tires. Right behind him Christopher Bell. And then you got look at Almendinger bouncing back again. He's been down and out, up and down all around. Almendinger in seventh. Michael McDowell after that pit stop miscue, losing the right front lug nut. He's in seventh place or eighth place. Well, and he's done a great job of hanging on and, and not imploding with that bad pit stop. Kyle Larson was someone that we thought yesterday had the best five lap, ten lap average. Looked like he drove to the front early on, but hasn't been the day we expected from him. Ross Chastain's had a pretty quiet day, hanging on to a top ten spot here in the number one. And Kevin Harvick in his final Sonoma appearance in 11th. Yeah, struggled just a little bit with the four car. Hasn't been the day that he hoped for, but, uh, you know, he likes this place. We all love it. He's he's cherishing these last laps on this racetrack. Behind him, Ricky Stenhouse. Mike, well. having a career year, won the Daytona 500, the amount of top tens this year. He's not a road racer. He has not okay. been a road racer, but top ten at Coda earlier this year, and you see him right now in 12th. Well, neither is Ryan Priest, but Priest came out here and ran the ARCA race on Friday. Started on the pole and won it, and that has paid off. Priest having a solid day. After Coda, this next one's the one that surprises me the most. I thought he was going to be the one. If anybody could challenge for a win, and I really thought he'd be challenging Reddick for that win, it would be William Byron. Didn't have the best of days yesterday in practice and qualifying. Kind of struggled ever since. Yeah, Alex Bowman, you see right here, they have not, they've been really quiet all day long, but they start off the year. He and his new crew chief, Blake Harris, start off the year incredible, and they're going to have a decent run today. Brad Kozlowski had a very early pit stop. Uh, they were kind of off sequence with everybody for a while. Made his first stop at lap 16. He's in 16th place. Bubba Wallace starting out right on, as soon as they got on the racetrack, he was off of it and been slipping and sliding around, struggling this weekend for sure. Bubba's been solid, but not here today. Ty Gibbs was one of those Toyotas that were all five in the top five early in the race. Spent the middle part of the race hanging right around 10th place. Here he is 18th. Yeah, a little shocking to see him fade like he has in this race. He, as you mentioned at the beginning, I mean, it looked like he had a car that could contend to win as the race went on, has went on, though he's lost some track position and has faded back. You see an 18th now. 19th will be Austin Dillon. Got in a little dust up down there in turn 11 earlier in the day. Uh, right smack in the middle of the lead lap cars and then Corey LaJoy uh, who for a while had the race's fastest lap since eclipsed by uh, Haley uh, but LaJoy back in the top 20. See a little bit of tape on that right front fender that's from he had that massive contact with those tires in turn 11. Here's Justin Haley who does have the fastest lap of the race. At a minute 18.91. Two to go for Truex. And the gap pretty constant with Kyle Busch now at 1.8 seconds. Now oh, you see Kyle Dush, Kyle Busch runs a little wide on the exit of turn 10. He's doing all he can to not only try to catch Truex, but you see right there behind him, Eric Jones who had that spin earlier. White flag waves, one lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. There's no better feeling then when you have a car like Truex does, you have a three second lead, you get to take the white flag lap, Clint, and just savor it and kind of enjoy all of it. Don't have to run it 100%. He'll hear these words, just bring it home. That's, <laughs> That's right. a good phrase. And, and nobody's done it better than him. Uh, man, I'm telling you, again, I, I, I joke, but it's honest, like he is a he's a boring winner, man. He dominates when he decides to go out there and lead these races. He takes care of business.
It's a few more corners down through the S's. Take your time, huge lead, no mistakes, nothing clean sailing in front of you. Nobody's been off the racetrack. Track is clean. So our top here. give me about two, three more good clean corners here. Our top ten is going to be half Chevrolets, three Fords, and two Toyotas. But the one at the front is Martin Truex, looking for his 33rd career victory. Through turn 12, and Martin masters Sonoma. Martin Truex. For Joe Gibbs Racing and Toyota gets his second win of the season. Oh, yeah, brother. Oh, yeah. I told you I was going to line it up. I felt bad for him. Good job, man. <laughs> I felt bad for him. <laughs> I love him. No, he didn't. <laughs> Great job, guys. Thank you, man. Truex gets his fourth win at Sonoma in his 17th start here. Second only to Jeff Gordon on the all time win list at this track. Man, what a turnaround for Kyle Bush, Joey Logano. Bush, your solid day, another solid day. Big turnaround for Chase Elliott, capitalizing on that. Poor McDowell having a bad pit stop at these guys. Unbelievable. You called it. Called it, buddy. Well, we called it because you, you took my credit later on in the, in the broadcast. So that's good. Poor Great God. day for, for the night. It came much clearer at yeah. the, towards the end. What about it? Ross Chastain? Been a struggle the last couple weeks for him. Nice way to turn that around with the, with the top 10 today. Now, the one that you look at is Denny Hamlin. That's the one that today really unraveled out from underneath in a big way. Pole sitter, by the way. Look at the smoke inside the car. That's so awesome. Well, he's lighting it up for all those fans up at turn seven in the uh, chalet up there. Truex, who is 42, just became the oldest NASCAR Cup driver to win on a road course since 45-year-old Tony Stewart wow. beat Truex here on the last lap in 2016. Two hundred fourth career win for Joe Gibbs Racing. Eleven drivers scored those wins. Coach. Fourth win of the year for them. Coach Joe Gibbs down there, a big smile on his face. These Toyotas, they keep getting strong. You start thinking about us going off the air here, right? Hand it over to our buddies over at NBC. Keep an eye on these Toyotas. They are catching the Chevrolets, catching that Hendrick camp in a big way. Tell you what, great shots today. Great crew. I've had so much fun with you, Mike. Had a lot of guests. Um, Jamie, all of them. Looking forward to next year bringing Harvick in, but uh, it has been fun. It's challenging sometimes bringing the guests in, but just hats off to everybody. This this is so much fun to be able to do this week in and week out with this crew. We, we truly have a, a, a great family at Fox, people behind us. Well, as we told them this morning, it's, it, this is the most dedicated crew in sports television. What they've been through with rain delays and rain outs and then get it all together and get it to the west coast in two days and then get these pictures on the air for you and the sounds of the race then i don't know about you but you win one of these races it's such a long lap here at sonoma you want to do all the burnouts which what, what you really want is that moment with your team you know oh, you like gotta that, save a little that, bit that, that I want to do this yeah i mean like it's that celebration They're you get to have with your whole team yeah, yeah for sure he's going to burn it down right to them stop in front of them No, he just went, he went right by him, Jamie. <laughs> gonna, gonna get a, <laughs> I want to yeah. turn around. I'm, I'm coming, coming back. back. <laughs> <laughs> he may get a drive through for excessive burnout. <laughs> you know, the only thing I didn't get to do this year is drive that drone. I'm well, I would say that was probably my yeah. reason, Clint. I did get to drive you around, though. Love that. Clint, I think that's because flying a drone is an art, but landing a drone really requires skill. Say skill. Anything, I did not I say thinking. anything about landing the drone. <laughs> okay. Taking care of business. Boss man, Johnny Morris, he's going to be happy. Fourth win here. Unbelievable, that guy at this track. When you're hot, you're hot. And <laughs> Martin Truex, boy, he mastered Sonoma today. It's one of those old-fashioned. What did Larson say the other day? That's an old-fashioned butt whooping right there.
No mistakes, did a great job, lost some track position, got right back up through them, checked all the boxes today. All right, Jamie Little. And Martin Truex Jr. climbs from his race car. They're waiting, they're holding the checkered flag for you <laughs> over here, Martin. You grab that first. It was no secret last year, Joe Gibbs Racing was off when it came to road course racing. But you guys didn't give up and you came back to stomp them today, a dominant performance. What did it take to get you back here, this team back here, to victory lane? You know, Jamie, just um, a lot of hard work by everybody. Um, everybody at Toyota, TRD, everybody at JGR in the off season to kind of redesign. You know, we got to do some work with NASCAR to redesign some stuff. Everybody did, and they did a good job there. But um, just hats off to my team, you know, James, Jazzy, all the guys, um, you know, to be to be so bad here last year and to come back and do that with the same car basically is uh, it's, it's really unbelievable. So just proud of them. You know, we're having a great year. I feel really good about our team. Bass Pro Shops, uh, Toyota TRD, Reacher's Fine Foods, Auto Owners, Toyota, uh, Noble Aerospace, Rock, Flight Safety, Sherwin Williams, Oakley. Got them all in this time. Last time I screwed up, but uh, we couldn't do it without all of our partners, um, all of our fans. And um, man, just feels uh, feels incredible to, to have a day like that and a run like that and a, a team like I have. They're just they're doing everything right right now and it's a lot of fun to drive these cars. So thanks to them. I also got to give a shout out to my cousin Jeremy. He's in the hospital, a little banged up. Hopefully, uh, hopefully he's feeling a little better. Be out in a few days. Martin, yesterday in qualifying, you said, "I'm having fun." You had that big smile on your face. Second win this year. What's it like to have a car this good with a team that's just connecting the way it is? That's why we do it, Jamie. This is, um, you know, this is why you go through years like we had last year, and you just keep fighting. You never give up on it. You, uh, you always believe in each other. You know, we haven't changed anything on our team other than, you know, parts and pieces, and um, and it's just uh, through a lot of hard work of a lot of people. So uh, thanks to Coach and everybody, and um, our pit crew's been really working hard. They did a great job today. So it, it takes a total team effort these days, as close as everything is with these cars, and you got to execute. We were able to do that today. Martin Drex Jr. wins at Sonoma for the fourth time. Well, Kyle Busch starts 12th today, finishes second, but there was a lot of work that had to happen throughout the course of the weekend on this race car. Kyle, you guys did a nice job getting it tuned up. Great pit strategy and impressive second place day. Yeah, not too bad, obviously. Thanks, Just uh, wish we had a little bit more. I tried there really hard at the end to, to at least try to keep Martin honest and Felt like uh, I could beat him a little bit on a lap and then I would mess up and he'd beat me by a little more on the next lap, you know, so uh, we were just kind of trading a little bit there, but then he was able to pull away uh, there late. But um, great job by all the guys on this McLaren Grills uh, Camaro. Just proud of the effort. You know, we gave it everything that we had. We made a lot of changes, as you said, and, um, you know, we got a, a lucky break there with a yellow with um, only three laps on tires. So we were able to kind of cycle to the front. And, you know, once we got up there, we could maintain pace with some of the good cars and, and have a good you know, top three speed race car and uh, just kind of flip flop the race a little bit. So uh, good fortunes for us. And, um, you know, nice to come out of here with a P2 after a win last week. Three wins to this point in the season as we head into the off week, a first and a second the past two weeks. This team really stringing together some good runs. How close are you guys to be able to make a run towards Phoenix this year? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I want an off week. Let's go, right? <laughs> Uh, we're rolling right now, but uh, it'll be a good break for everybody just to kind of regroup and refocus and and set in for the last uh, the last 18 in a row, you know, but um, all in all, just real proud of the, the guys and the communication and, and the way they're able to go to work and kind of work through some of our issues and, and try to improve on what I need to be able to feel in a race car to uh, to be able to put out finishes like that. So if we can keep doing those things, then, um, you know, we'll be a force. Thanks, Kyle. Good job. Thanks, Regan. Toyota wins. Chevy second. Ford third, and to Jamie Little's point, last year the highest finishing Toyota was 18th. This year, they're in victory lane with Martin Truex, and we'll be right back.
Coming up next on Fox, stick around for week nine of the USFL. It's a North Division showdown as the Philadelphia Stars take on the New Jersey Generals, and the Stars can clinch a playoff berth today. Catch all the action coming next on Fox. Martin Truex celebrates in victory lane. He'll get that big goblet of wine and start the celebration. Well, let's look at the standings here. 16 drivers will make the playoffs and 10 different winners so far in the regular season. 16 down, 10 races to go. Yeah, Truex right there adding his name to that multi-win column. It's a big day for him. And you see where the cut line is and the differential of drivers between themselves and the cutoff line at Alex Bowman just ahead of Daniel Suarez there. So below that line, those drivers could point their way in, but these drivers are in a win to get in or else situation. Yeah, I mean, just look at that bubble scenario on that last page for two seconds there. I mean, Suarez had a tough day, puts Bowman right back in the, in the, in the thick of things and only with a decent day. This is far from over, and this is why I love connecting and staying tuned to this sport as, it, as NBC takes over, because I'm telling you, that's gonna definitely heat up. Look at that goblet, it's that's full gonna right be the, there. That's gonna be the best taste you can have all day long. I know you're it. not gonna believe this, I broke my goblet. <laughs> no doubt. Party was uh, pretty intense. <laughs> All right, well, thanks to my colleagues, I'm reminded that when Tony Stewart got that win, he beat Denny Hamlin, not Martin Truex. The memory fades over the years, but still it was one hell of a finish. <laughs> it's fine. I told him he was just standing a little bit too close to me. That's what happened with your stat on that one. But uh, um, for sure, you know, it goes back to Tony winning that race, goes back to today, four times that Martin Truex has won this race. Pretty incredible. Yeah, and I, I mean, I was so impressed with Kyle Busch, not just today, but just his season overall, his his uh, resurgence back at, at Richard Childress Racing. Uh, not only the three wins this year, but to be able to run second at a road course, he talked about short tracks being the weakness. Maybe they've gotten that figured out today with this current package. And yeah. Chase Elliott's back. Yes, yep. he's in a win to get in situation, but top five today, his first race of the year on a road course, had good rhythm, had good pace right up there in the mix. You know you're not going to keep him down. That's no. a champion, Mike. That That's right. guy he knows how to win championships. He knows how to win races, and I think they win a race before it's all said and done. Put themselves. I, in the I like that they went for it today. Like they they Short took take. a chance. Like it, it what did end up not being the right strategy, but they took a chance and they went for it, trying to get that win. Why did they go for it? Because they did. It's all about winning. That's the only thing they care about is winning. That and you heard Alan Gustafson say they have to win to be able to be at a playoffs, and you're going to see them gamble and doing just that. To, uh, what they did today, that ain't going to be the last time. And I like the no stage breaks in road courses. It gives everybody a whole lot of strategy choices makes for some interesting racing well it makes for a long race from up here i can promise you that but i do like it i love road race uh, road racing i love this racetrack and i think the, the thought was to give strategy a chance to play out and that it, it did it in coda and it was doing it again today well and it didn't you didn't penalize the guys that were running well they still had the opportunity to get stage points right. they wanted but there were guys behind them that could cycle ahead and so i really enjoyed seeing that aspect look, of it look what it changed right the play the caution did come all right well what did it do it really gave those teams an opportunity to to really change the outcome of their deal chase elliott kyle bush that you talked about a lot of guys took advantage of that caution untimely caution on pit road so an exciting day at sonoma as usual what a fitting place to cap off the nascar on fox season we wish our colleagues at nbc well as they go forward the usfl is coming up but first we've got more coverage coming up from the charlotte studio of our race here at sonoma today martin truex caps off a great day in wine country